Welcome, welcome, welcome everybody to another live stream. Here we have an excellent live stream this evening and I will fill you in on all of that in just one second. I have a couple of eagerly uh, waiting people backstage right now, which I will be bringing up shortly. Uh, but first off, I uh, as always, I just want to start off uh, by thanking my Lord and Savior for providing me the ability to have an online ministry to be able to reach out and help uh, Christians strengthen themselves in defense of the scriptures. Um, next off, I would also like to thank my wife and my children uh, for providing me the ability and the support uh, to have this online ministry. It's a lot of uh, work and effort that I have to put into it, and I'm glad that I have a, a very godly wife and some wonderful children uh, that put their support into that. And of course, all of you out there, the subscribers, the viewers, thank you all very much. Uh, because without you guys, I'd just be standing, I'd be sitting here talking to myself. Um, so thank you all very much for taking the time out of your day and listening to me. It's wonderful. And if you do like the content here, of course, you can hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit the bell, turn on all notifications so that when I do go live in the future, you will be queued in on all the live streams coming up in the near future. Also, if the Lord moves you to offer one, uh, a love offering, you can do that by using the super chat or the super stickers. Also, uh, you can become a member of the channel as well. Uh, the link uh, for that would be in the channel description, I believe. Or you could also follow the link to PayPal. But And I thank you very much. May God bless each and every one of you that do support the channel in every way that you can. So, with saying that, though, it is time for the main event. Let's get ready to rumble. First off, we have the Unitarian, Mr. Taylor Stewart. How you doing, Mr. Taylor? Glad doing to see good. you today. Glad, glad to see you too, especially after our debate. <laughs> so tell, tell the people a little bit about yourself. Yes, so my name is Taylor Stewart. I'm founder of Stand on Scripture on YouTube. And I am a Unitarian Messianic, and I hold callings for all people, Trinitarians, Unitarians, modalists, atheists, and Muslims to converse on um, scripture or lack of there, if you're atheist. Hey, man, thank you very much, uh, Taylor, for the information. Now, next off, we have our friend, our dear brother in Christ, Ask Truth Apologetics. Let the people know a little bit about yourself here, Ask Truth. Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, Taylor, it's fantastic to meet you. Chris, thanks for having me on. Um, yeah, I'm just a guy. I love Jesus, and I like to talk about it. So we're going to keep this brief because I want to I get to the rumble part. Hey, man, to that. All righty. So just so everybody does know out there, um, I just want to go a little over a little ground rules. First and foremost, my moderators have the last say in everything into the chat. I... I made them moderators for a certain reason. I trust their view, and I stand behind their decisions. Uh, so if something happens into the text, please don't talk to me about how the mods are being, uh, first and foremost. Next off, I do not want any disagreeing out there. Um, on this channel, I am united in Christianity. Catholicism, Protestantism, uh, we do not talk about that in the chat. I don't want to have... Uh, secondary fights and, and debates into the chat i want to keep it all on topic and of course i'm going to be having a dear brother uh in the Ro from the roman catholic religion william albrecht uh with me next weekend i view the catholic religion as dear brothers and sisters in christ so i don't want any of the back and forth of that into the chat as well so thank you very much everybody for that now what we've all been waiting for we're here and we're going so we have a debate this evening. The topic will be, does the New Testament teach that Jesus or Jehovah, whichever way you want to pronounce it, or sorry, is Jesus uh, Yahweh or Jehovah? Sorry about that. Now, in this debate, the format will be going as follows. Uh, Ask Truth Apologetics will have a 
uh, 15 minute opening statement. After that opening statement, Taylor will be allowed a 10 minute rebuttal question period. So he'll be able to question and crossfire Ask Truth's opening statement. After that, Taylor will have his opening statement for 15 minutes. After And as soon as Taylor is done, Ask Truth will be able to question uh, Taylor's opening statement. After that, I think we're going to get into the best part, which is the cross-examination part of the debate. We're going to have a 40-minute cross-examination. Uh, it will be split into four separate sections, so each speaker will have two separate sections, and they will get 10 minutes each. So in total, they'll have 20 minutes of questioning the opponent, and that will be split into two separate sections, followed by the closing uh, statement. After the closing statement, we will be going into the questions. Um, I will bring people up live if they want to ask a question. doesn't matter to me if they're Unitarian or Trinitarian. I will go back and forth one at a time. I will not pile all the questions upon one uh, speaker. Uh, so you Unitarians out there, uh, the only thing that I ask is please do not blaspheme uh, Jesus Christ into the chat, even if you don't believe he's God, uh, because my mods will ban you if you blaspheme our Lord and Savior. Uh, that's just not acceptable into the chat, so I'm just putting that out to you guys now. So uh, the ways that uh, you can ask your questions, of course, you can come on to the panel and you can ask your question. I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to allow a debate. It's just going to be a question and an answer, and that's it. It's not going to be a back and forth situation. If you guys want to set up a debate another time, go do that. Now, also, you can ask your questions into the chat. Uh, that is another way that you'll be able to do that as well. So uh, with saying that, we'll get into the debate right away by going to Mr. Ask Truth Apologetic, sir. You have 15 minutes for your opening statement. Whenever right. you want to start, I'll start the time. All righty. Thank you, buddy. So all... Oop, hold on, sorry, I hit a wrong button here. There we go. Uh, so all heresies begin with the misunderstanding of the essence and energy distinction. The essence or the substance that is God is ultimately unknowable. However, God's energies are knowable. They're knowable through his revelation, creation, and through theophanies. This... Uh, is why John says that Jesus is the fullness of God made manifest. The essence that is God is brought into reality through many means, but none are complete except through Jesus. The most common analogy that we can use for the essence energy distinction is to consider uh, the essence and energy of the sun. That's S-U-N. We experience the, the sun through the light, radiation, and heat energies that it gives off, but we cannot directly experience the essence of the sun. To approach the sun would be more and more difficult the closer that we get, and it would ultimately be impossible uh, to actually reach it before we become obliterated. So the question we should all be contemplating is when we experience an energy of God, are we really experiencing God. So what I mean is, did Moses really experience God when he appeared to him as a burning bush? Or when the Israelites followed the pillar of fire and cloud of smoke, did they experience God? When the voice of the Father was heard when Jesus came up from his baptism and the Holy Spirit was seen descending like a dove, did they experience God or the Mount of Transfiguration? I think we can all agree that these are all real experiences of God, and they are real experiences of his energies. But like I said before, none are the fullness of God except for Jesus. Jesus is the fullness of God. The essence of the sun, that's S-U-N, cannot be removed from its energies and vice versa. So when Trinitarians, me, proclaim that God is one, we mean one in essence. When we say that God is three, we mean that there are three personal and distinct persons or expressions and energies of that essence. We have the Father, 
who is eternally begetting the Son and eternally emanating the Holy Spirit. There is a distinction between the enemies, and we call those distinctions persons, but there is no distinction between those energies and the essence that is God. My opponent, my opponent is infamous for quoting passages that proclaim that God is not the author of confusion, and he tries to make the Trinity sound confusing. Well, no, sir. What is confusing is how someone can proclaim to believe in the Bible and ignore the very clear verses that call Jesus Yahweh. So while, they're, while he's ignoring those verses, he will cherry pick verses that clearly state that Jesus is a man. It seems logical when we read the Bible to admit that it teaches that Jesus is both, both God and man. So if Taylor chooses to ignore the passages that I will bring up today that clearly state that Jesus is God in favor of the verses that say Jesus is a man, he will be denying scripture, the very scripture that he claims to believe in. Taylor seems to have made a false dichotomy in his mind. Taylor falsely assumes that Jesus can um, only be either God or man, but not both. So Unitarians are always misunderstanding the Bible in favor of one heresy or the other. So they either err on the side of, you know, Jesus is God's side and he's the same person as the Father and Holy Spirit, or they err on the Jesus is only a man side. So they are either modalists or kind of classical Unitarians. And I believe Taylor is a classical Jesus is created heretic. An honest understanding of scripture is to conclude that there is no dichotomy. So Trinitarians answer yes on both accounts. Yes, Jesus is God. And yes, Jesus is man. So when Taylor is citing passages that depict Jesus as man, um, I will say amen, because that is what the Bible teaches. But when he errors and ignores or illogically denies the passages that say Jesus is Yahweh, I will pray for the scales to fall from his eyes. To deny the energies of God as anything other than God is to deny God altogether. So let's begin with some passages that explicitly call Jesus God. John chapter 20, verse 28, Thomas answered him, my Lord and my God. Romans 9, 5, he says, and is the Christ who is God Overall, Titus 2.13 says, waiting for our blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. 2 Peter 1.1, 1, 1, with by the righteousness of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ. So these are explicit and clear passages that say that Jesus is God. So let's begin with some deeper and more nuanced readings of the Bible to show that Jesus is Yahweh. So we're going to read Mark 1, verses 1 to 3. The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written in Isaiah the prophet. Look, I am sending my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. A voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord, make his paths straight. So anyone reading their Bible can see a footnote or follow the link on their Bible app to the verses that correspond to this found in the Old Testament. But first, we're going to have to establish who these characters are in the passage and what their actions are. So the character I in this passage is Yahweh. The messenger character is John the Baptist. And John the Baptist is preparing the way for a character called the Lord. So who is the Lord? Well, let us follow the link to Isaiah 40. Uh, verse 3 and Malachi 3 1. Isaiah says, A voice crying out, Prepare the way of the Lord in the wilderness, make a straight highway for our God in the desert. So when you look at that, Isaiah says that John the Baptist, right, is preparing the way for God. So who is the Lord in Mark? Well, it's God according to Isaiah. In the Hebrew, the word translated as Lord is actually Yahweh. Malachi um, says, see, I'm going to send my messenger and he will clear the way before me. Then the Lord you seek will suddenly come to his temple, the messenger of the covenant you desired. See, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. So Malachi is nearly saying the same thing as Isaiah, um, that the messenger who Mark identifies as John the Baptist is making way for God, a.k.a. the Lord, a.k.a. Yahweh. 
Malachi also mentions the Lord suddenly coming into his temple, which Jesus fulfilled when he turned over the tables of the money changers. We can read in John's baptism account in other details, right? So John 1, 29 through 30 and verse 36 say, The next day John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Here is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And this is the one I told you about. After me comes a man who surpassed me because he existed before me. When he saw Jesus passing by, he said, Look, the Lamb of God. So Isaiah and Malachi say that the one coming after the herald of the messenger is Yahweh. Jesus is identified as the one that John, the messenger, was clearing the way for. What does this mean? It means that Jesus is Yahweh. I'm going to structure this in a premise and conclusion argument. Premise one, a special messenger is preparing the way for Yahweh. Premise two, John the Baptist is that special messenger who is preparing the way for Yahweh. Premise three, Jesus is identified as the one John is preparing the way for. So conclusion, Jesus is Yahweh. Moving on to some more proof text. So starting with John 1.1, 1, 1, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. The word became flesh and took up residence among us. We observe his glory, uh, the glory as the one and only son from the father full of grace and truth. So what do we read? The word is explicitly identified as God. And then when we get to verse 14, God, the word is said to be tabernacling or dwelling in the flesh um, and the flesh of Jesus. So what does that mean? That means Jesus is God. This is also echoed in Philippians uh, chapter 2. In John 8, 58, Jesus refers to himself <clears throat> by using the Greek equivalent of the name of God, Yahweh. This is such an obvious claim to be God that the unbelieving Jews immediately pick up stones to stone him for what they perceive to be blasphemy, which is claiming Jesus was claiming to be God. When we read Revelation 1, 8, we see that God identifies himself as the first and the last. This is what it says. I am the Alpha, Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, the one who was, the one who is coming, um, and the one who is the Almighty. A few verses later in Revelation, it records this. I turned, so this is John speaking, I turned to see whose voice it was that spoke to me. When I turned, I saw one like the Son of Man. When I saw him, I fell at his feet like a dead man. He laid his right hand on me and said, don't be afraid. I am the first and the last, the living one. I was dead, but look, I am alive forever and ever, and I hold the keys of death and Hades. So who is the Son of Man? Well, Jesus refers to himself as the Son of Man dozens of times, but perhaps the most profound time was when he makes reference to himself as the Son of Man figure written about in the book of Daniel. Matthew 26, six, uh, 63 to 65 says, But Jesus kept silent. Then the high priest said to him, By the living God, I place you under oath. Tell us if you are the Messiah, the Son of God. You have said it, Jesus told him. But I told you, but I tell you, in the future, you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his robes and said, He has blasphemed. Why do we still need witnesses? Look, you have heard his blasphemy. You can see that Jesus is stating in transparent terms to be God. This is why the priests accuse him of blasphemy, because only God can claim to be God. And finally, let us consider the, who is the only Savior. In Isaiah 43, verse 11, uh, God says, I, I am Yahweh, and there is no Savior but me. And to that, I say, amen. There is no Savior besides Yahweh, and Jesus is our Savior, which makes him, drumroll, Yahweh. Jesus tells us that in the Bible several times, like when he said that he came to give his life as a ransom, which echoes Isaiah 53, or in John 3, 14, when he tells Nicodemus that he would be like the snake lifted up by Moses, who saved the Israelites bitten by the snakes in the desert. And then when we move on to verse 15, Jesus says that believing in him will bring us eternal life. So who is Jesus? Well, 
In the Hebrew, it's Yeshua. Yeshua is a shortened form of Yahushua, which is uh, Yahweh, right? So the, the YH part refers to Yahweh, and the rest has to do with saving. The word used in Isaiah 43.11 is Mosia, which is a derivative of the root word meaning Savior. So Jesus' name means Yahweh uh, saves, or Yahweh is our salvation, or Yahweh will save. So when we look at Matthew 121, we see that there is clearly a play of words being done um, in that Jesus, Yahweh saves um, his people from their sins. So this is what Matthew 121 says. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. He's a savior. So Jesus, as a, we're just uh, reviewing, Jesus is the I am name of God. Jesus is the first and the last. He is the word of God who is God dwelling in the flesh, the son of God, the divine son of man, and Yahweh, the only savior, Yeshua. So Jesus is Yahweh, our savior. And I know this because the Bible tells me. That's all I have. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Thank you very much, Mr. Ask a Truth Apologetics. So what we have now here, folks, is we have a 10-minute questioning period. So Taylor, you have 10 minutes to question Ask Truth on his opening statement. Okay. <clears throat> so you talked about essence and energy. Can you tell us if these words are in the Bible or biblical? Um, that off the top of my head, I can't think of uh, those words being directly um, biblical, no. Okay. When you um, talk about um, heat and energy, would you call this philosophy and not biblical? Uh, well, it is philosophy. It's, it's theology, actually. Theology, but it's a part of um, philosophy. Yeah, yeah, theology is, a, is yeah. And do you realize the Bible tells us to not be taken by empty philosophy and traditions of men? Correct. It tells us not to be taken by empty philosophy. And I don't believe that theology, especially biblical theology, uh, when backed up by actual scripture, is empty. So is um, heat and energy biblical, as you said, if it's backed by something that's biblical? Is, I'm trying to re, uh, go ahead and repeat that for me, please. You talked about heat and energy, which is where the last question came from. Right. It, is, it's analogous. Heat and, is heat and energy biblical, which you say it's backed philosophy, backed by biblical stuff? Is heat and energy biblical? Is heat and energy? Well, I mean, Jesus is the light of the world, so that would be light. And I'm, I'm, I think maybe you're misunderstanding that I was using an analogy, something we can all see and understand yeah. about the sun, the S-U-N. The, the reason I'm bringing this up is just to break down points that are basically ambiguous statements, not seeing um, that. But the next question, where does it say that Jesus um, is the fullness of God in the Bible? Um, that would be John uh, one eighteen, I believe. John one eighteen. First, uh, John yes. 1, yeah. Isn't John 1 8, Ian, if I'm not mistaken, that he made no one seen God, but he made him known? Yeah, he has made him known. Correct. So he's, it doesn't say um, that he's the fullness of God, which is what the question was. Okay. okay. Um, can you show any clear verses that say Jesus is Yahweh or Yehovah, yod heh vah where the tetragrammaton is used in the New Testament, which well, is the for... tetragrammaton. Yeah, I understand what it is. Um, the the New Testament is not written in Hebrew. Okay, so it's impossible for you to show in the New Testament. Well, which yeah, is so it is possible for me to show that Jesus used the uh, Greek equivalent of the tetragrammaton. So when we read the Septuagint. Uh, when God is speaking to Moses and says, I am has sent you um, mm -hmm. in the Septuagint, it says, ego, I, me. So you're probably making reference to John um, 8, 58. And Jesus says, before Abraham, 
was ego I me. Okay. Do you realize the blind man said ego I me as well? Does it make him Yehovah? That's ridiculous. <laughs> That's a ridiculous. Well, said, well it's a it's a it's a false equivalence. You're you're completely making a false equivalence. The, the I say I am all the time. You say I am all the time. So we we read the scripture by utilizing context. And so by the context of the verse and the way that Jesus said it, he's speaking about a past event and using the present tense, I am. So and then just... we also take into account how the um, how the Pharisees and scribes who were hearing it, how they reacted to it. So it was clearly perceived by them for him to be claiming to be God. Okay. Um, actually, I've got a question in regards to the Pharisees. Do you realize in the Old Testament, it talks in a Pharisee, since you use a few um, Old Testament statements, that the these people will come with false accusations that he knows nothing about. Also, Jesus himself said that, why are you accusing me of blasphemy for just saying I'm the son of God? They accused, do you realize that they were just accusing Yes, they were accusing him for saying that he is he is the the son of God, or saying that he is God, um, and he's not making mention that there he's not making mention of their accusation being false that he's not God. He's saying that it's not blasphemy for him to be God because he okay. is God. Okay, is um, an accusation a truth by the definition of the word? No. So therefore, saying you're accusing me of something. Is them lying? Would you agree? No, I don't think I understand exactly what you're saying. The word accusation is to basically impose that they're lying. And you said the definition of accusation is not a truth. That's not what I said. You agreed. I stated, do you know the definition of it is not a truth? And you said, no. So, well, yeah, so the, it's not necessarily a truth. And what I was trying to explain to you was that when Jesus is saying that, like, well, you were saying they were falsely accusing him of, of blasphemy. And I can't ask so you a is question, an accu I, So is accusation truth according to the definition? According to the definition, no, an accusation is not a truth. So the Pharisees lied by accu um, having an accusation towards yeah, him. Yeah, but the saying, question is, what are they lying about? That's the question. Yeah, they're lying about something, and he's saying, you're accusing me of blasphemy. All I said was, I'm the son of God. And he actually further says, he said, you are God's and sons of the most high. Do you realize that he's saying they're lying about him? No, I'm not okay. following. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm literally not following what no, you're saying. Um, you're using God in this debate, but the debate is, does the New Testament say, um, say that Jesus is Yehovah or yod heh Yahweh? So Elohim is a generic term. Elohim has been used for you are God's and sons of Most High, which Jesus said. Does stating someone is God make them Yehovah? No, obviously not. Millions of people, or not millions, lots of people have stated that they are God, and they're clearly not. So every time in the um, Bible, every verse you've said where it says Jesus is called a God or God. A God? Or, I never said a yeah. God. Well, God, Elohim, the, Theos in the, um, the Theos, New yeah. Testament. Correct. Theos, yeah. yeah. So the, the, the so, word, yo, the, the Tetragrammaton is never used at all in the New Testament. Yeah. As then, as a Hebrew as a Hebrew base, so I, I feel like you're going down a, a path that. So he's called a God, though he's called God. It doesn't make him Yehovah. Do you accept that? Um. So from a nuanced position, in the context of the verses that I gave, it does make him God. Just in general, no, it doesn't automatically make someone God. Okay. Um. Context Mark says, here. okay, could you tell me a context where it says um, this God is Yehovah in any of the verses you brought up explicitly Yehovah since it's supposed to be the same context? I'm sorry, pardon me. Repeat. Could you show me a verse in one of the um, New Testament um, scriptures where it says this God is Yehovah? You said context is key. Can I show two, you a scripture where it two says minutes, guys. this two God minutes. is Yehovah? 
Yeah, the God you're seeing, the God context makes this God Yehovah. Can yeah, you I, I said that in my opening statement. That was my whole with the with the premises and whatnot um, from the the Gospel of Mark. Yes, but you sewed it together with Old Testament stuff. But the debate is so you're so you want me to ignore the context of the Old Testament coming into the Old Testament? Like that's well, what you're trying to get me to do, and I'm not going to do that. That's well, that's you'll see that the debate is about does the New Testament stay this? I've stayed away from Old Testament because. The debate is about the New Testament, but nevertheless, um, we'll move on to one of the other points. Do you Jesus realize... makes reference to the Old Testament yeah, hundreds yeah. of times. So why why can I not make reference to the Old Testament Be as because, it pertains to the New Testament? I've not gone to the Old Testament by because, itself. Because I would, it to the New um, Testament. just because I've got not much time. Um, because the Bible, uh, the, sorry, this debate is explicitly, does the New Testament teach it? Not does the New Testament backed by the Old Testament teach this but i want to ask a question um you went on to john 1 29 um how the lamb is um lamb of god notice how it's not god the lamb is of god existed before me you realize that this could also be um talking about in the mind of god that god pre-new or for-new according to first Peter. Well, according to your line of logic here um if the bible doesn't say it then you're not going to ascertain that from it so no i was just asking a question do you realize it can be that yeah it, it can it, it could in the world of possibilities it could be given the context i think that's uh, a crazy so, thing to think so does so since we see in um, 1 Peter one twenty, it says pro ignorance menu in the Greek, which says for known. And we see since you've went to the Old Testament. Okay. All righty. So that was the 10 minute questioning round after Ask Truth's opening statement. Now we have Taylor. Taylor, you have your opening statement up to 15 minutes. I'll start the time whenever you start speaking, sir. Okay, I'll start now. The debate is Yud Hei Vav Does the um, New Testament teach Jesus is Yehovah or Yahweh Yud Hei Vav The Yud Hei Vav which is Yehovah, the name of God, not a title, Lord, Curios. Um, this name is um, for, which is used in the Hebrew, they put it down in English, the Lord, but it's actually the name of him. Yehovah. The Tetragrammaton Yudhiyavafia is not found in any extant New Testament manuscripts, all of which have the word Kyrios, which is Lord, or Theos, God, in the Old Testament quotes where the Hebrew text um, has the Tetragrammaton in the Old Testament. The New Testament um, uses two, which is according to the International Standard Bible Encyclopedia of the two Theos, which um, is God, in is more common, appearing in the text thousands of times in its truest sense and um, expresses a deity, but by accommodation it also um, does for heathen gods. The other um, word which is um, curios, which is Lord, which appears around about 600 times in the Old Testament. The word theos is used for God's um, word in John 1 verse um, no, yeah. I think I've read, read that wrong but I'll go on with it, which is logos um, yeah I've totally messed that up but I'll keep on going with it anyway is used for God's word, which is in Lugos. Sorry. Anyway, I'm going to continue. I may have messed up that few um, sen um, sentences. His speech is... Okay, I've totally went off topic here, so I'm going to ignore this theos for now. Um, the speech is not um, a person, Jesus, personally, according to John 1, verse 1, the Lugos is a speech, divine utterance. And while Jesus is... No, but now we're going on to the topic, is... Um, considered a theos also we see in um, the Greek 2316 Strong's Concorns so if you want to use um, theos um, would be a weak argument considering it's been used for other people 
um, such as um, Jesus replied in John 10, 34, is it not written in your law? I have said that you're gods. This is talking about the theos um, word, and it also was written go on to the curios. But the word um, derived from theos is theoi, um, which comes from obviously the theos 2316 Greek. So simply using theos or theon or theoi as an argument to make um, someone Yehovah is nullified because it's been used for um, Pontius Pilate, um, or actually that I've put in the wrong place again. Curios, uh, sorry, theos has been used for gods and sons of the Most High. Now onto the word curios. Well, um, it can be used for Yehovah God, it can be used for um, other lords and masters, Matthew 6, verse 24. No one can serve two masters, neither um, either they will hate one or they will hate the other, or he will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve both, serve both God and money. We can see masters, uh, which is coming from uh, Curios, is used indication to money, which isn't even a person, it's a thing. Um, and it's in regards to God. There's different things that can be called curious. Also, without um, going too much in depth, we see in Matthew 27, verse um, 63, Sir, which is curious, they said, remember, well, he was alive, the deceiver said, and so on and so forth. This is talking about Pontius Pilate as Sir. A curious. So it, are these people because they've got title of curious um Yehovah God because curious can be talking about your God or can be talking about a master or can be talking about a king? You can check that in Strong's Concorns 2962. The reason I bring this up is because Yehovah itself is never um written the Yud here in the um in the New Testament, which is which basically makes the point impossible for this to be to be one on the Trinitarian side, seeing Jesus as God without the Old Testament, which is why my opponent went to the New Testament, because sorry, the Old Testament, because he can't do it only from the New Testament, which is what this debate is. Does the New Testament teach this? And it doesn't explicitly um, have written Yehovah, like even in English terms in the translations, Yehovah the new, um, in the New Testament manuscripts as well, as as the um, the Yod Hev Vav here. Well, we can guess. Curious, does this curious fit with this um, Yod Hev Vav here? We can guess means Yehovah doesn't necessarily mean it since we've seen it can be used for other people. Where do we stop? And if you go back to the stance of the verses, um, like ambiguous verses, him being called a God, why is he called a God? We can get into that when we get into the questions because people have been called gods as we've seen before. Now, John, since there is no explicit terms in the um, Bible New Testament that Yehovah, um, Yehovah is in the manuscripts at all, obviously because it's Hebrew, it's not Greek, um, we'll go through the verses showing that Jesus himself says who God is. He never himself said, I am God, or um, anything correlating to Yehovah or any um, of these titles. John 8, verse 54, Jesus um, Jesus answered, If I glorify myself, my glory means nothing. The one who glorifies me is my Father, who you say he is your God. So he's saying the Jews at the time were clearly Unitarians, which it's neither here nor there, but there was no Trinitarians at the time. He's saying your God, you call the Father. But we go on to either other verses in John 20, verse 17. He speaks to Mary to say to his um, brothers, do not cling to me, for I have not yet ascended my father. Go and tell my brothers, I am ascending to my father, your father, my God, your God. The disciples' God is the father. He didn't say, I'm going to my God, and your um, and your God is, by the way, three persons. And why is it that he's um, worshipping a different tool, a different, a, tip, a different God to what we are commanded to do? If God is a trinity and we're commanded to worship a trinity, 
shouldn't Jesus be doing it? Otherwise, he's not perfect because he's just broken the law, worshiping a different God. That is not the case because apparently the Trinity is the God. John 17, verse 1 to 3, everyone knows it, so I'll just be brief. Jesus is speaking to the Father, and he says, Father, the hour has come, glorify your Son, that your Son may glorify you. And he goes on about eternal life. And he says, this is eternal life, that they know you, the alone true God. Monos in Greek means alone, the definition of the word. So you are the alone true God, and Jesus is your Messiah, Jesus Christ, who you sent. This is predicated of the Father as alone. This literally means by yourself, none other, not of, but it can be others, um, but we'll, we'll just pick and choose when it comes out in the future. Uh, we'll just see who it can be, and it doesn't say Jesus isn't the only true God. Well, it doesn't say that Batman's not only the true God as well. John 4, verse 22 to 23. You worship what you do not know, but we worship what we do know. Salvation is of the Jews, but a time has come and has now come when true worshippers will worship the Father, who is just called the alone true God, the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeks such as these to worship him. God is spirit, and his worshippers must worship him in spirit and in truth. Why is it that God is considered uh, talked of as a his singular, um, and the true worshippers worship him, the Father, and this Father is alone a true God? Also, in the A, uh, the A B C E, um, the Amplified Bible, Ephesians 3, verse 20, now go, uh, go between, which is in media um, brackets, has to um to do with implying more than one party there can be no mediator with just one person in brackets yet god is only in brackets one person and then another and the one person is not in brackets in this um translation so god is one person in different translations in the kjv it says no a mediator is not a mediator for one and god is one one what does it say one with five and one, six and one, or is he clearly talking about one um, being one person? We see contextually, 1 Timothy 2, verse 5. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Jesus Christ. So one is God, and there is one man that is mediating between men and one God, not three and one gods. Um, John 8, verse um, 40 says, but now you are trying to kill me, a man who told you the truth that I heard from God. Abraham never did such a thing. So he's telling them that they're trying to kill him just because he heard from God. Just like a prophet, a human being heard from God. Just like Moses did, just like Elijah did. Every prophet hears from God. Acts 2 verse 22, men of Israel, listen to these words. Jesus of Nazareth is a man who is attested to you by God, by miracles, wonders, and saints, which God performed through him in your midst as you yourselves know. So it's not Jesus as God man, but it is God that's in the man doing the works. He did it through him. Um, John 17, verse 30. Although God overlooked the ignorance of earlier times, he now commands all people everywhere to repent, for he, singular by the way, has set a day when he will judge the world with justice by the man, not by the other person, God. He judges by the man he appointed. He um, has given proof of this to everyone that re for, by he raising him from the dead. So again, God raises Jesus from the dead. God is one, he, not um, a plural. Never in the Bible, especially in the New Testament, do you see God as a th um, we, um, we are your God. So Jesus called himself a man uh, acts, um, that heard from God. We see that God, this God, did the miracles by him, the man, Acts 2, verse 22, that performed the miracles, wonders, and saints. Acts 17, verse 30 says that God judges by the man that he appoints. So where is there a verse in the Bible at all, in the New Testament, where it says Jesus is a God man, and he was fully God by himself. No, God dwells in him. The Father dwells in him. John 14, verse 10. I do not anything, I don't do anything on my own. It is the Father who dwells in me. He does the works. The one that is God in him 
is um, God, not him being God. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 27 to 28, for he has put everything under his feet. Now, when it says everything is put under him, this does not include God himself, who put everything under Christ. When this is when he has done this, then the son will be subject to him. How is the son equal or co-equal to God if he's subject to God? Doesn't make sense. And there is like 12 other verses in the New Testament um, where Paul says, blessings be from our God and Two Father of our Two Lord Jesus Christ. God of our, uh, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And he has a couple, Ephesians 1, verse 2 to 3, Ephesians 1, verse 17, Romans 1, verse 7, 1 Corinthians 1, verse 3, Galatians 1, verse um, 3. There's many others where Paul says, Jesus has a God. Now, if Jesus has a God, and he also is a part of the Trinity. You've got the Trinity, which is three persons, and he is supposedly Jehovah God. But yet he has a God, which is the Father. That is two gods regardless. Jesus has a God, and Jesus makes up a part of um, Jehovah God, three persons in one being. Why is it that you, um, John 14 verse 10 clearly says that it is God the Father, the Father dwelling in the man, Jesus Christ, in Acts 2, 22 says God performed the works, miracles, wonders, and signs through the man. There is not one, there's no way in the um, Greek that the yod hear vavia is because, well, it's Hebrew and Greek doesn't write the Hebrew that way. We know, however, that they could have come up with a name just like for Jesus, Eosus. They did a um, name for Jesus from the Hebrew to Eosus, um, Yeshua to Eosus. Why didn't it do the same thing for God's name to show that Jesus is God? Why didn't it come up with something like Yehoshosus or something like for Yehovah or whatever they would do for that? Why don't it come up with a, a thing rather than just titles or, you know, God is called curious and God can't be called curious, but Pontius Pilate can be cu curious. Why don't they come up with a name in Greek for Jehovah in the New Testament? And that's it. All right. I was just about to say uh, in nine seconds, you'd be done. So that was pretty close to your uh, time limit. Uh, I've been watching the chat and anybody that's got a problem with my mods, uh, you can leave. If there's a problem with them, I stand behind what my mods say. Uh, my mods decision is their decision. I stand behind the decision. Uh, don't be bringing it to me. I'm moderating a debate right now. All right. Hey, so now we get into the questioning round. So ask truth. Apologetics gets 10 minutes to ask Taylor questions. And as soon as you're ready, ask truth. Apologetics. I'll go ahead and start your time. All right, Taylor. What was what was the name you proposed for God? What was what was that word you said? I can't even remember. <laughs> I just freestyled it. I wanted to or something. Yes, 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 yes. That yeah. was uh, that was good. I, I appreciate that. So you you mentioned that um, the the tetragrammatron is not present in the New Testament. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. Um, so how, as a Bible believing, you believe in the New Testament, right? Okay. Yeah. How then do you know it's from God if his t the Tetragrammatron or God is not even mentioned in it whatsoever? Because the Father is God. Um, obviously, I can't go off um, Old Testament um, stuff, but... I, you see... can go to Old Testament, man. It's okay. relating. I'm... Okay. Well, Old Testament says that I wish that you would call me Father. There's no verse that says I wish you would call me Son or Holy Spirit. So we can contextually see that the God... The Father is Yehovah. It's just saying Abba in um, okay. the New so, Testament. So, so you do believe in context. I do believe in it. Okay, because you, you have you have a very much engaged in semantics, and it seemed to me that you were taking things out of context and just sitting there and over analyzing the the exact definition of words. Um, so. I guess my, my, my first question, re, like regarding um, just I, I want to understand what you understand. I'm having a really hard time gathering this. So can, can you explain to me what you understand about the essence energy distinction? 
I have no clue because I don't look into like philosophy type stuff. I only go by the Bible and I've never seen anything about essence um, or energy. I'm assuming that um, the essence is a person and the energy is th like the three persons are that energy or have that energy. I'm assuming. Well, so when when people write things down, um, when when theologians come to the conclusion um, that the Father, uh, you know, of of the Trinity, do you think they just made that up out of out of thin air? People making up the Father of the Trinity. No, no, no. Just the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Like, where do you think this comes from? You think they don't they don't make references to the Bible? You think they just made it up out of thin air? No, I think they've um, came up with some references not that it's um actually biblical in the sense the concept but there's um clearly paganism that's been injected um and the bible says there are some who were of us but they went out basically not remaining in the teaching okay they can, went can can you substantiate your claim that uh, there's clearly pagan influences yeah, well, biblically, I can go by that um, scripture I was um, going by there. The, John is saying there was some that were of us. They did not remain in the um, with us. Therefore, the Antichrist, I'm paraphrasing the um, passage. Also, um, Justin Martyr, if we were, they talk about the um, church fathers, was known as Justin the philosopher, and he kept on talking about all these pagan gods, your God, Zeus, and blah, 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 said this. So, yeah, there's blatantly pagan um things being bled into okay so when paul is is um speaking um to the greeks and he goes through their temple and points out the different um pagan gods and he says you know this one doesn't have a name and mm -hmm. he uh kind of uses that as an opportunity for evangelism uh you what, what, what do you think about that if I'm not mistaken, I could be wrong on, on what you're talking about, but when he went there and they were trying to make him a man, um, God, and they said, you're Zeus or Apollo to the other one, and he said, no, we are just men. For me, that would indicate that Jesus is just a man, otherwise you see how does, he was a man. How, does that, how, do you, how do you get from Paul saying he's just a man to that proves Jesus is just a man? Because he says that he's just a man, they're not gods, but he would have had the perfect opportunity to say, I'm, I'm just a man, but there was a man who was God, and that was Jesus. So you're not, so you don't think you're completely reading into the silence of that? Yeah, there's um, some silence there, but you would think it would be if he's saying, Don't worship us, we are just men. Do you, do you know what an argument from silence is? Yes, but do you not that's think not that you're making that? So. that logical fallacy right now the argument is from um, silence however the statement okay. of him saying is, we are just is men, that an informal fallacy no an argument from silence is not an informal fallacy no because not the whole um the whole statement that i said wasn't all from silence he's saying we are just what you men. Were say yes he is just a man and you said that would be the perfect opportunity for him to say blank 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 but he didn't Therefore, because he didn't say that, that means that Jesus was just a man. You see what I'm saying? You, yeah, that's part making, of it. Yeah, but that's an argument from silence. Okay, then I'm apologizing for that argument of silence, but the first part still stands in regards to... Yes, I, I agree with you. To Paul him. denied being God. Um, please, please tell me, like, when Thomas calls Jesus uh, my Lord and my God, why didn't Jesus yeah. correct him? He goes, no, no, no. Because right. he wasn't calling Jesus God, he believed that God was in him. Because it was he was called the doubt, uh, doubt, the Tom, uh, doubt, Thomas, because he didn't believe in the resurrection. It was God who was in him doing the works, and he believed that. And the where, does, is, where does the Bible? Because you're you're very strict to the Bible when it suits you. Um, mm -hmm. So where does the Bible say that? The Lord of me and the um, God of me, if it said, Jesus, you are my God, then you would have an argument, or you are Yehovah God, or you are the Lord God, or something he doesn't say is, but there's the not even a word. So, so in Trinitarian, so explain to me Trinitarian theology. I, I want to, I'm not sure you fully yeah. comprehend it. Three persons um, is co-equal, co-substantial, co-eternal, um, three persons in one being, which is um, God. Okay, so 
after you say that, can you relate to, to the essence energy distinction? Uh, like I said, I don't know about the philosophy thing, which is not biblical. Okay. I'm just saying that's what Trinitarians claim so the Trinity. Is anyone besides God, is there anyone besides God who is eternal? No. Okay. So when Jesus uh, is said to be eternal in Revelation 1, 17 to 18, um, that he is eternal, what is he claiming? Well, he's not saying he's eternal, like without beginning, without an end. It's like now that he's been resurrected, he has eternal life. We can be given eternal life, okay. but we aren't. So when you read verses 1, 8, and God the Most High, which doesn't have the Tetragrammatron, so I don't know how you can conclude that it is Yahweh. Uh, when he's speaking, um, he says, I am the first and the last. And then when Jesus is speaking, he also says, I am the first and the last. So he gives himself the same title as mm -hmm. God the Most High. So I guess the question I should pre-ask you is, do you believe uh, Revelation 1.8, where um, the Most High God says, I'm the first and the last? Are you talking do, about do one here to this morning? Because you said huh? there's two there's two times when it said which one are you talking about? Just so one eight, the first it. time that it's one said. eight. That's talking about God, and we see in one one God give believe... to Jesus. Okay, so do you believe that um, verse one eight, the first time that it said that that is Yahweh speaking? Yes. Two minutes. Okay, and then when Jesus says the exact same thing about himself, you mm -hmm. don't believe that. No, I believe that he's got a title that God has, as many okay. people have got titles of God's. Right. So do, uh, do do Trinitarians believe that Jesus is fully man? To my knowledge, yes, I'm fully God. Okay, right. So when you're reading verses that say that Jesus is fully man, how do you how do you think we should respond to that? Well, you can't be fully man and fully God because it's contradictory That's to a philosophy. what man is. You're doing no, philosophy. It's, it's con yeah, no, no, it's totally it's con philosophy. You're sitting there doing logic, which is a, which yeah. is a form of philosophy. No, it's contradictory. Um, it's to, not contradictory. If a man, a man is a human being. He lives. He's given birth. He dies a physical death. He's hungry and all this. Man, a man can't go flying off the thing unless God gives him the ability to do. If you are God, man then you've got the ability to do some, um, both. You're at best a demigod, not a human being. Okay, so when the Bible clearly says that Jesus is God, what's your what, what's your reaction to that? Yeah, I've got no problem with Jesus having the title of um, Elohim or Theos um, because you are God's and sons and most high. So you think that he's just giving himself a title that lots of people have? I don't think he gave it himself. I think God gave him um, like the judges with in um so, so let me ask you this. Are you a god? Yeah, I'm a um Elohim small G in English. Um because I would be um, lifted up as a judge, not a Jehovah God, the creator. So how how does that happen? How did you become lifted up? Well, in the All next right, kingdom we got time here, guys. Yeah. Alrighty, so that will end the 10-minute questioning period uh, for Ask Truth Apologetics. Um, so now we're just going to have a little brief break in the pause, a little pause in the action here. The the debaters can get a little sip of their drinks going, uh, get their voice back, Cheers. get some happening. So yes. <clears throat> I just want to thank everybody out there for this uh, the support and everything. Just don't forget to hit that like button, hit the subscribe button. Hit that bell. Turn on all notifications just so that you're uh, aware and, and alerted of upcoming live streams, uh, especially next weekend. I just want to make this announcement now that we do have up to 126 people into the chat now viewing this debate. Uh, next weekend, I'm not sure if it's the 29th or the 30th, I will have a, a dear brother in Christ with me, William Albrecht. Uh, we will be discussing uh, the authorship of the Gospels in the early church, uh, right from Nicaea all the way down to the Apostolic Fathers, right to the Apostles themselves. Uh, so everybody needs to stay tuned for that. That's going to be a wonderful, wonderful live stream. We'll be blessed to have our brother uh, William Albrecht with us next weekend. So, so God willing, we will be doing that on the 29th or the 30th. Stay tuned. Uh, keep your eye open for that live stream coming up shortly. All righty. 
getting back into this huge debate that we're having this evening. We have now reached the cross-examination section of the debate. In this section, Taylor will have 10 minutes to cross-examine Ask Truth Apologetics. So, Mr. Taylor, whenever you're ready to start, sir, I'll yeah. click the start button. Um, start now. Can you show me one explicit verse that says Jesus is Yehovah? No, because you refuse to accept the Greek equivalent. How um, about, can you show me one verse, not explicit, but a clear verse saying Jesus is Yehovah? It doesn't have to be explicit. So will you accept uh, Theos or Kurios? No, because their titles, it can be used for anyone. It would have to be... You want me to say that Jesus is the Father and become a modalist heretic? No. Because you said that the Father is the only, only, is <laughs> Yahweh. So you're trying to get me to, to equate uh, Jesus as the Father. And that would be, that would be blasphemous. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to do that. I, my opening statement, I gave clear, concise verses that you reject because you like to do semantics um, as clear... Um, words that that uh, jesus is god okay what um one sound does the um does any greek manuscript have the word yehovah or the tetragrammaton in it uh not to my knowledge are you in are, are, are you also including the septuagint no anything yeah you can greek manuscript because that's the greek, the the greek translate yeah because that's the greek translation um not yeah. to my knowledge they they translate the tetragrammaton as a ego i need or curios they do both but uh in in the first time that uh like i said uh in my last 10 minutes that we discussed uh ego i me i am is what uh god said to moses i say i am has sent you when he goes back to his people Actually, um, actually, that's not even Yehovah's name, by the way. The next verse after in verse 15, if I'm not mistaken, says, and you will call, tell him that the Lord, or yod he so mm -hmm. it's not even the yod he do you realize that? Yeah, but it's it, in the Greek equivalent, there, there's just not that. No, the verse before says, I understand what you're saying. I understand what you're saying. Okay. Um, would you agree that... But it's Kyrios... the same person. Is, would would okay. you agree that the I am and the yod heh vav -He are the same person? I am. And, yeah. The titles, uh, everyone has it. Do you realize that, um, if we're going by titles, that um, Artaxerxes and Nebuchadnezzar are called King of Kings, but God is called King of Kings? Does it make them God? No, it doesn't, because we look into the into the context. We read context. Okay. Um, would you agree that curious derived words and theos derived words are generic for, um, words for God or gods or Lord or Lords? Um, yeah, and you apply them appropriately based on drum roll context. Okay. Can you give me um, a clear verse where it says in the manuscripts, Iosus Yudhivafi? You, I've already said that it's not in the New Testament, so skip those questions, buddy. Okay. Um, would you agree um, that ambiguous verses do not prove doctrines? Um, no, I would not. I would not agree with that statement. So you can bring ambiguous verses and make a doctrine out of it? Absolutely, if they're spoken in multiple places through multiple authors, all saying the same thing, you bring them together in context, and then you can come to an appropriate conclusion. So is Moses Yehovah when um, Yehovah himself said, by my hand I strike this, actually it's Aaron, it was Aaron that struck, struck the um, water, is, Ye is Aaron Yehovah when he says, by my hand I will strike the nail with this rod in my hand and it will turn the blood, but it was actually Aaron that did it. When Yehovah said, my hand. Um, no, clearly not. 
just shown contextually, Yehovah said it was his hand, but it was Aaron's, so he must be Yehovah. Right. So the rest of so when you read about the rest of Aaron's life or even Moses' life for that effect, it's really quick to to understand that they didn't they they weren't sinless, they weren't stainless, they weren't perfect um, people, they weren't resurrecting folk from the dead. Um, they didn't claim to be the I am. Um, there's there's so much that of these ambiguous statements that Jesus made and the way that he lived his life and the way that he fulfilled Old Testament prophecy um, that clearly to, to me, obviously, and to the majority of, of Christians and not that numbers matter, um, understand that to, to bring about the understanding that Jesus is God. Okay. And Can you show me statements that say he is? Can you show me one verse that clearly um, is similar to John 17, verse 1 to 3, which indicates to um, Yeshua is the only true God or the Holy Spirit is the only true God and the Father, like a trinity or just Jesus by himself as only the true God? Um, yeah, so if we read, uh, I believe it's Matthew 28, 18, um, uh, Jesus is talking uh, to his disciples, telling them that they must baptize um the, the nations in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So that doesn't say only true God, but let's stick with that. Um, do you realize that the Matthew 28, um, the, the baptizing in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the predominant and more majority amount of the manuscripts actually doesn't say their name, but says his name, and all the disciples were always um, baptized in his name. And okay, so that makes it that that makes it stronger since only in my opening statement I said that only uh, Yahweh is salvation, and so baptism is for your salvation, for the remission of your of your sins, for the washing away of your sins, and even if it's Jesus, Jesus, uh, since Yahweh is the only Savior, and part of salvation is being baptized in Jesus' name, uh, then that would make him Yahweh. No, because he was given that name. Uh, Deuteronomy 18, verse 15 and 19, I'll be brief. I will raise up a prophet from among them. I will put my words in his mouth. He will come in my name and that God gives him this name. So just because he has a name doesn't mean he is the person. And later on in the whole context of the Old Testament, he's a servant, a chosen one, he's not God. So do you realize that any name that he has got was given, not that he always pre-existed having it? Um, I don't, I don't agree with you. Um, I believe that when you are given that name, um, especially when you're given that name by God, you are recognized as God himself as the authority. And I believe you had a, a debate with Chris about the, uh, the angel of, of the Lord. Um, and I think he clearly demonstrated to, to you, maybe not you, but to most other people, um, that when that angel has God's name, he acts as, as God. And that is a, a theophany of God, the word uh, in, in the Old Testament. Now, I know we're not debating so, that, so I yeah. apologize so for going off track. No so you um, would accept that Jesus was given a name? Uh, the man, the man Jesus was given a name, yeah. Where does it say the man Jesus was given a name? Say what? In the Bible. Where does it say in the Bible the man Jesus Two was given left. a name? So the man Jesus was given the name when, uh, when uh, Mary is told to call him. Yeshua. No, where does it say in the Bible? Because you said the man Dude, was like, given. Here's the thing: name. like you, you pick and choose how you like to apply scripture. No, you're the so one. I asked you things. a person. I asked you to prove it to me, like where it said this in the Bible. No, you're, like, oh, you're well, state, the means, you so. state, with all due respect, you stated the man was given it, but it doesn't say that. It just says he was given a name better than the right. angels. So it's not saying the man he. In total, because it's him, his existence, he got it. So he got it at a set time. Would you agree with that? Yeah, Yeshua was a given name. Okay, so he can't be God in pre-existing because he got that. In the that beginning was the word name. and the word was God and the word was God. So he was always known as Yeshua? No. And the word the is word. a logos, which is a speech and the utterance is not a no, it's person. Not what it is. The word is God. The yeah, word actually, it says was flesh. God. Past no, tense. It, it, yeah. Well, actually, it's in the imperfect, um, in, imperfect tense, meaning that it's forever. You you can look that up in um, Bible Hub. 
Yeah, I have uh, didn't see anything like that, but never mind anyway. Yeah, I'll pull um, it um, Can you um, show one ex uh, one clear verse um, similar? Uh, I've already um, brought up that. My apologies. Um, could you tell me what does the phrase "You alone, the true God" mean? It means that uh, you alone are the true God. So, would you accept that the "you" is the Father? And that the Father is alone the true God, no one does else. It, does it say the Father only? Yeah, in, in John 17, verse 1 to 3, Jesus is speaking to the Father, and he said mm -hmm. that they, All the right, people, you guys, know. we have the 10 minute finishing mark there. Thank you so much for that, gentlemen. This is a, I, I think this is a great conversation. I don't have to jump in here. You guys are, are going back and forth. Um, it, it is really hard uh, being a moderator. Um, and not being able to speak, but I'm trying to do my best here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with you, buddy. Uh, I've been there. Alrighty. So, uh, Mr. Ask Truth Apologetics, you get your first shot at the uh, cross examination. You have 10 minutes, and I'll start your time when you start speaking. Yeah. If, if you just go to Bible Hood, buddy, at John 1 1, it, it is in the imperfect form. Um, anyhow, um, let's see. So is there anyone, I already said that one, sorry, when Mark records the sayings of John the Baptist found in Isaiah 40, uh, verse 3, who is he clearing the way for? Yeah, it's clearing the way for Yehovah who is in Jesus. So both of them, the person, the physical flesh, Jesus. So God, God, is, is in. God is inside of Jesus, and he's yes. apparently John. inside of you in the same effect. Yes, John 14, verse 10, it's not me who does these things, it is the Father who dwells in me, does the works. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Um, so you said the ident he identifies Jesus as the one who is clearing the way for. But where in Scripture, and I'm going to play your game here, buddy, where in mm -hmm. Scripture does it explicitly say um, that uh, God is inside of Jesus? John 14, verse 10. Right. I do not speak on my own, but it is the Father who dwells in me doing the works mm -hmm. in Acts 2, verse 22. Right. But, also, just, but also, here's what's interesting. If you're going to apply that same standard, um, Jesus is in the Father. Yeah, so are we, so are we God? That's, that they be one just no, so it, as, If it works one direction, it's going to work, work both directions. Right. And if we you're are saying one, because the Father is working through Jesus, that, that makes the Father God alone. But then it also says that I am in the Father, so you yeah. could reverse that. And by your logic, I don't follow this but, logic at all, but, but by just, your logic, that would indicate that he is... Um, it says he dwells in him. It doesn't say like he's in me in that sense. It says dwell, which means to live. Also, John 1, 14, the word becomes flesh and made his and dwelling, which corresponds to Ezekiel 37, verse 20, um, 7 to 28. I will make, um, I will be in my, was it, I will be their God and they will be my people, my sanctuary, my dwelling place. Mm -hmm. The context says, Yehovah. Okay, but you've dwelling. avoided the, you, you're, you're deflecting from the actual question. No. By your logic, because the Father dwells in Jesus, that means that the Father himself is God and Jesus cannot be. No, not my logic. Otherwise, by your logic. Is that what you're we, saying? No, I'm, I'm answering. Okay. I am one with them, Kathos, exactly the same as, exactly the same. I am one as they are one, them and me, and the, me and us uh, as a congregation to be in them. So what you're saying is because he is in the Father and not the Father, then he must be God. Well, we must be God as well. But Jesus said the Father dwells in him. The Father is the one that does the, the works, the prophecies. And the... I am in the Father. So I don't understand how the words are different. Because I am in them and they are me. It's the CSI as well. It doesn't make you <laughs> then God. How can you draw a distinction between yourself and Jesus or yourself and God? I am seeing what the scripture says in okay. Acts 2, how verse do 22. You, how, do you, how do you draw a distinction between you and Jesus? Because he's a man. He's my bigger brother, my Messiah, my king. Yeah, I've but got to from, in from, an, from an essence standpoint, you're saying that you also have the Father dwelling inside of you. Is that correct? I do. I'm a temple okay. of God. Yeah. So, so how is that any different than Jesus? I never said it was. That's that's all you needed to say. Um, 
So we, we've kind of already talked about this, but who is the word of God according to the Bible? It's not who. It's not a who. So the word of God dwells in flesh. No, no. The word of God became flesh. If you look at Gen, um, Genesis 1, 3, God says and it becomes. God said, let there be light and there was light. God's word becomes creation. Okay, so Jesus just came into existence at that particular time. Is that your position? Yes, it was manifest in these times according to the scripture. Yeah. Um, do, do any early church fathers that you're aware of support your understanding? No, I don't really care what the church fathers say. I don't believe that they are of God. So, <laughs> so people who knew the apostles and then people who knew the people who knew Apparently. the apostles, they don't, mi- they don't matter to you. They Apparently. don't matter to you. And the fact that, um, again, the Bible explicitly says that uh, Jesus is Theos. But you just play this game, the semantic game of saying, Oh, you know, it's it's not it's not really the theos. Uh, well, theos can mean lots of different things, and you yourself are essentially claiming to be as much theos as as when when um, Thomas calls Jesus my Lord and my God after his resurrection. Not me. God is in me. He would be talking to me, but I don't care. So about I, so I could just sit there and call you theos. If you were to speak to God in me, then my Lord yeah. and and my God, I, like if if I were to say that to another human being, what what on earth? If you recognize that I God was saying? in me, you'll be speaking to God in me, not me as God. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> when Jesus said, "Before Abraham was, I am," mm-hmm. why do you think the um, scribes and Pharisees tore their robes and claimed to be? claimed that he was blaspheming yeah because they were accusing him they wanted to kill him the old testament says that they say things about me that i know not. right 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 but my point of it is what if from from what you can ascertain from the verse itself what do you what were the pharisees thinking what were they proclaiming they wanted to kill him because they knew that the Messiah was going to be the one in the Melchizedek, the order of Melchizedek. Therefore, the Levitical priesthood would. So, at it. what point does that justify killing? At what point does because that become doesn't, blasphemy? Doesn't Jesus say that your father is Satan and he was a murderer? You're, and you're deflecting all over the place. Man. I'm not. So I'm, I'm where, answering your question. You're not answering that particular question. They're murderers because Satan is in them. Okay. So I've answered your question why they wanted to kill him because Satan was in because them. Because they're because they are possessed by the devil, is that correct? Yeah, their father was a devil and he was a liar and a murderer from the start. All right, fair enough. Um when Jesus claims to be the son of man seated at the right hand, well you're just gonna answer the same thing, right? Because they're they're the devil, basically. Is that your answer? When they whenever yeah, somebody wants to kill Jesus, it's because they're possessed by the devil. Yeah, they're falsely accusing him. Okay. Um, so when Isaiah records the words of Yahweh, they say, I, I am Yahweh and there is no savior, but me. What did he mean? God saves through Jesus, through his um, predestined plan. So Jesus is a savior, but the ultimate savior is the father. So you just, God doesn't have to, God doesn't have to accept God doesn't have to accept the um, sacrifice. He go, oh, well, he's a human being. He's lived his life. I'm not going to take this up, but he did. God does it through the man, Jesus Christ, Acts 2, verse 22. Right. Okay. So in the New Testament records that Jesus, claiming to be the Savior in the inspired New Testament writings, identify him as Savior, what are they saying? That he's the one that died for the sins. He was perfect. He had yeah. No so, sins. but but you have basically just made um, Jesus a partner uh, with the Father, and in, in, in that sense, so he is yeah. the Savior. But it says that God is the only Savior. Yahweh is the only Savior. But yeah. it seems to me that uh, Yahweh is is not the only Savior. He also is. Jesus is also the Savior. No. That he works through. No. The Father is the Savior, but God was the one that saved through them, doing the miracles, wonders, and signs through him. 
Jesus couldn't do the you know resurrection or whatever if it wasn't for God dwelling in him. So it is God saving and backing his Messiah. It's it's like a painter painting through a paintbrush with paint. The paintbrush isn't doing like the things by itself. It's God doing it through. The miracles are not being done by the person. It's because God is doing it through him. It sound, uh, sound like a Calvinist to me. Okay, I don't know what one of those is. Do you believe in free will? To a degree, I believe that everything is predestined. Every, God knows everything, but there's free will that God knows where it can lead to. So it's, it, I'm not sure. Okay, because that's philosophy, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, so when the new, uh, sorry, so what is baptism for? What's the purpose of baptism? It is the death to the old you. you well, what's it for? So it's just for dying. It's just, you just you know, die. You repent of the sins that you do. And it is a symbol of dying to the old you going beneath like a grave. You come out a new you. It's washing. Does the Bible say the that? Like, does the Bible, but what does the Bible say about it in regards to sins? Well, the Bible says that unless you um, be born again, you don't what does have it say about Alrighty, baptism? boys. Alrighty, we have the end of Ask Truth's 10 minutes questioning in the crossfire. So that is the first half of the crossfire. Get them limbs stretched out, boys. Get the, get the punches ready. Get the jabs going. All right. So we have the second half of the crossfire coming up. Uh, Taylor, you have the next 10 minutes to question Ask Truth Apologetics. Uh, before, before you do that, again, I just want to thank everybody out there. If you're liking the content, please go ahead, hit that like, hit the subscribe, hit the bell, turn on all notifications. And of course, if the Lord moves you to offer some love offerings, their links are down and below. You can do the super chat, super stickers. Uh, you can go to the PayPal link and or join as a member. So thank you very much, everybody, for being here. We have, again, still over 115 people here watching the debate. And now, back to the debate, people. Getting into the second half of the crossfire, starting off with you, Mr. Taylor. As soon as you speak, I will start the time. Okay, I'm going to go back to the last question that didn't necessarily um, get a fully finish. Um, could you tell, well, could you tell me... Um, what does the phrase, you alone, the true God, mean in John 17, verse 1 to 3? Um, so it means that uh, the Father is, is God. Okay, so when it says the Father is alone, the true God, why do Trinitarians think Jesus is Jehovah, the true God, if the Father by Jesus is well, alone? Have, have you read verse 5? Yes, I have. It's um, reiterating what some of my questions because you you. I've allowed you to use um, question time on me. Go ahead. John, John 17 verse 22 says, He gave us that glory. Are we God? No. So that doesn't say anything. This He had glory before. It's talking about He He believes He's getting it. Who is the, uh, why is the Father alone the true God and never the Son? or the Holy Spirit as the alone true God by himself? Because the Son is eternally begotten through the Father, and uh, the uh, Spirit is eternally emanating from the Father. So that's why only the Father is alone the true God, and no one else is, because he's alone. He's not alone. Like, do you, do you understand? Like, the, I, I can't ask a question, but the word eternal means forever, always, never not. Mm -hmm. Like, that's what the word eternal means. So when there's an eternal father and an eternal son and an eternal Holy Spirit, that's exactly what that means. Why does it say an eternal son in the Bible? Why does, why, do you, why are you creating this? Because um... you'll keep on mentioning them things. So I'm asking you where it says that. So I, if you're wanting to basically convert me to be a Trinitarian, you're seeing things which aren't biblical. So I'm asking you where does it say so I can at least, you know, open my mind to be a Trinitarian. But it's obviously it's not scriptural. So why does Jesus say you, scriptural. Father, are alone the true God? 
right, let's go ahead. I'm, I'm going to go to 17.3 to make sure that uh, we are reading this appropriately. Yeah. The, and this is eternal life that you know, that they know that you, or that, sorry, uh, that they know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ, who you have sent. I glorify yeah. you on earth. Yeah. Okay. So Jesus is saying, you and the word for only is monos in Greek. It means alone. The definition of the word is alone. You are alone or only the true God. And Jesus is your Christ, which is Messiah, the anointed one who you have sent. Why is the father predicated of as alone, the true God, if there, if Jesus is the true God as well? Sorry, I'm reading this. Yeah, I... I... I'm I'm starting to get caught into your trap of of literally putting it into this small box. So I'm going to go back to verse five, um, okay. where uh, it says, "Glorify me with the glory that I had with you." So you're not going to ask question why no, I'm, Jesus I'm, said because I'm not going to be I'm not going to be it's not pigeonholed. I'm not going to be pigeonholed into only reading one verse and exegeting only one verse without okay. reading the full context. Okay, read the, the full chapter. context yet and use. I did, the, I, I did read the full context. Okay, read John 17 verse 22 when it's because I give me the glory that I had with you before, and then 22, I've given them the glory you have given me, so we must be God then. That's what you said. You said that you were God. Yeah, but I'm saying we must be Yehovah God if that glory that he had before makes does, him does, does Yahweh share his glory with anyone? He shares glory, not his glory. He's mm. given glory to kings in the past. And, right. Yeah, and he gives glory, the glory of... So um, when Jesus eternally exists alongside the Father with his glory, what does that mean? That means that he's glorified alongside the Father no, with the he's Father. He's got a glory. He's got glory, but it's not Jehovah's His glory. glory. Okay. Um, anyway, so you're not going to answer about the Father being alone, the true God, which Look, has got nothing Father to do with that. Is Are you going, when you read John 17, verse 22, where Jesus said, the glory you have given me, I've given mm -hmm. them. So we must be God if verse 5 is saying that he's God. Because oh, that's what he that. answers. I absolutely don't believe that. So if verse 5 we is don't not... Have, we don't have... We, you and I, and every other person doesn't share the glory with God um, eternally. We didn't. But, we don't share the glory of God before the world yes, was born. Yes, but Jesus we, gave us the glory he had before the beginning of the world. Okay. What this is actually talking about is that he believes the promise... That was will be given to him. But even if that is saying he pre-existed, the glory that he had, which is apparently him being the only true God, he gave us in verse 22. And you're not answering that question, which is fair enough. I'll move on if you would like me to, unless you would like to answer the question. Go for you since you've given the authority for the eternal the only true God. Yeah, just go ahead and move on, man. I, I feel like uh I feel like so, we've Exactly. Can you show a clear verse that says something like, it doesn't have to be explicit, but Jesus um, is God doing the miracles as God in the flesh, um, which we've seen in Acts 2, verse 22. Um, God does the works through Jesus if he is Yehovah. Um, so I'm going to get to go ahead and read uh, Philippians. You know where I'm going, right? We'll yeah, that, um, you may want to start at verse 5 where it says we have the same mindset that Jesus had to humble ourselves. And in verse 6, it says that um, the actually where the interlinear read says he did not consider equality something he would grasp. Uh, yeah. Um, so it says that he emptied himself, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Took it as a form of a servant. Right of existing of the form of God. So Jesus yeah, is a man, yeah. right? You and I both agree that Jesus is a man, right? I yeah. take it a step further and believe that he is fully man and fully God, but you and I can at least both agree on that one point, mm -hmm. right? That Jesus is a man. So he emptied himself of what? Of being um, better because he was the lane of no, King David. He wasn't, emptied he's himself a servant. as being in the likeness of God. Yeah, so he's empty himself being in a likeness of God, but not God. A likeness is not the thing that it's like. Is that right? No, I mean not in this so, not in this context. So, are you your father, 
but you're like your father. Are you your father? Okay, so be Jesus, careful because we're getting into modalism. Yeah, I know. <laughs> um, uh, so Jesus uh, is pre-existing, first of all, which I don't even think you believe Jesus pre-exists as an actual being. Actually, a question, question. You believe in the pre-existence, yeah? Could you look up the definition? Existence. Okay, uh, could you look up the definition of the first word used in um, first? Do you want Peter? me to stay on this point, or do you want me to? Uh... No, we'll, we'll move on. Um, first Peter one twenty pro ignos menu in Greek literally means to foresee an event. So he was foreknown. Two minutes, guys. Two minutes before left. this. How does he pre-exist if God foreknew him? You said First Peter two three. No, no. First Peter one. 20 and in the lexicon you'll find that it's pro ignos menu which is for knowledge or for c having like been foreknown right yeah so how is he pre-existing if he's foreknown well he's known he's known i don't i don't know what else to answer that. he's known no worries so if you're um, always existing you're known no, um, no and, foreknowledge. And I'm, not, I'm not sure no, of the context. Foreknowledge, this, since I've only got two minutes. Okay. Foreknowledge, foreknowledge is like, for example, Jeremiah 1 verse 5, it says, I knew you before you were formed in the womb. Now, that actually says, I knew you before. This says, foreknew. Mm -hmm. So is Jeremiah somehow pre existent because he knew before? We've got to be very careful in what's being used because in 1 Peter 1 20, it's foreknowledge. If I said, a dog is coming over the road. It's going to do a backflip, get run over. That's foreknowledge. It never happened, but it will happen. So how can Jesus be pre-existing, but also foreknown? Yeah, I'm, I'm reading the whole thing. If, if you want to move on, you oh, can. I'm just no, reading that's this. fine. There's only two minutes left anyway. I don't think I'll get the next question in. we got 30 seconds left. I, I guess I, we'll move on. John 20, verse 17, Jesus said, the... God of the, um, the, his God and the disciples' God is the Father. Why didn't he say, I'm going to my Father, your Father, my God, but your God is the Trinity? Or, you know, not word by word? Because uh, the Father is God. I don't know why I have to keep repeating so that. So are the disciples Unitarians then? And Jesus? No, Unitarian. the disciples aren't Unitarians. Well, their God they is know, the Father. They know, yes, their God is the Father. Only. It, yeah. would, be, it would be blasphemous to say, Say that what, their God is not why did true worship Alrighty, us guys, worship we the have our ten minutes up there. That will be Taylor's last ten minutes of the cross examination. Thank you very much for your ten minutes there, Taylor. Now we have the last, last, last ten minutes of the cross examination. Now, ask truth apologetics. You have ten minutes, sir. I will okay. start your time. When you start speaking, um, Jesus receives worship. I'm just going to answer that really quickly. Um, so we already had started to discuss what baptism was for, right? And you tried to avoid saying that is for the remission of sins, but it is for the remission of sins, correct? No, I said that. that. I said that. Okay, so it is for the remission of sins. So when Jesus said to baptize all nation in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, uh, why didn't he just say the Father, since you think the Father is the only true God? Yeah, I believe I tapped on this in regards to the in the, the manuscripts, the earlier and the more predominant. Actually, okay, but it says the Jesus, only right? One name. Yeah, Jesus. It's the his one name, name is Jesus. His name, which is Jesus. So Je it's not the Father, though. No, the name that was given to him, salvation. If you know Yeshua in Hebrew, means salvation. Yeah, I said that in my opening statement. So, yeah. um, so why, why, why? Who, who forgives the sins? The water doesn't forgive your sins. So who forgives the sins? Yeah, Jesus can forgive sins. He also said that we can, if you forgive sins, they are forgiven. If they are withheld, then they're withheld. Yeah. Okay, but the well, ultimate then, sin forgiveness comes from who? Yeah, the Messiah who got the authority so from the God. So the ultimate sin forgiver is the Messiah. Yeah, that got even the though, authority from uh, God. Even though Isaiah says that um, Yahweh is the only Savior. Yes, Jesus so if, got the authority can from we, God. Can, are we saved if if we're, our sins are not forgiven? Are we saved if our sins are not forgiven? Well, no. Okay. So if Jesus forgives sins and only Yahweh forgives is the, the Savior, mm -hmm. 
What does that lead you to understand? Uh, God give him the authority to do so. So it's always just about getting getting authority, right? Well, that's that what Jesus said, yeah. Right, and then, but when Jesus speaks with authority, right, they say, oh, he speaks with authority after the Sermon on the Mount. That was really just God speaking through him. Is that your, is that your yeah. position? Yeah, so if God's not with him, he wouldn't be able to do it. Okay, so let's let's pretend, right, that you're not going to play manuscript games. Okay. Um, it says, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Uh, mm -hmm. is, is the name in the Greek plural or singular? So the, the, the actual word name, plural or singular? You're talking about the English version of name. I'm talking, I said in yeah, the Greek. singular. All right, it's Greek, it's, I'm not sure. It's I'm singular. Sure. I, I'll, if you trust okay. me, it's singular. I've, I, I I've trust you. looked it up. Thank you. Um, so I've, I've, I've looked it up. So assuming that the actual manuscript is supposed to say what it says in today's mm -hmm. Bible, uh, how many, so it, it says one name, singular, and then it gives mm -hmm. three names. So why didn't it say names plural? Well, um, probably because it's a modalist God. So the Bible teaches a modalist God. Is that I'm, I'm just saying in that position, I, I don't believe that the manuscripts actually say that, but it could be. Because, that because... But if it did, that would ruin your that would ruin your position. No, because I don't so believe deal that. deal with um... it as if it won't ruin your position. Okay, then having um, a name... And I've already answered this. Actually, I shouldn't even fall into your trap. The the minority, the majority say that it's only the Alexandrian manuscripts says what you say, and um, only a few of them. So, okay, so I, I can't. Yeah, that's that is, on the um, table. Um, so you're just not going to answer. Is that correct? No, I've answered. You just don't like the answer to that question. All right. It is a good answer. Okay. Um, anyhow, Adam and Eve came together. How many people are Adam and Eve? Adam and Eve. Oh, you're talking about mankind. Um, I'm assuming they grew up like they're called man, but Adam can be mankind, but it can also be talking like a name of a man. Um, Adam and Eve are two persons, yeah. So Adam and Eve are two persons. Uh, but then the Bible says that they became one flesh. Yeah. Do you know what the Hebrew word is for that? Yeah, it's a card. Um, the context of that, you're saying they became one, but the Shema doesn't say they and also Jeremiah. Um, uh, what, is Elohim listen. a plural or singular? Um, um, it's a uni plural. It can't be um, both depend on the context. of what's being No, said. it's depending on the verb usage. Yeah, that's what I've just said. Yeah, yeah. so it, it, it's depending on the verb usage. Well, yeah. I'm just saying that there is a, um, yeah. So when this, yeah, so that was actually where I was going to go, where I was going to go next. Um, tell me when your sect of Unitarianism, Unitarianism began. I don't see how that's um, really in line with. Um, does the Bible teach Jesus is your? Well, I'm just so, I'm just curious about the how this how this movement began and who's who started it. Stuff okay, like that. Bible. If, if Bible? You heard of the, yeah, if you heard of a group called the Way, or um, there's also Epionites, um, which predate the Church Fathers by way by thirty. Yes, um, seventy AD, and they okay. had copies of manuscripts as well. All right. So, what did they believe? They believed uh, what? Um, to my knowledge, they were um, vegans. They were the vegan group that were saying you shouldn't be eating meat, um, but they believed that Jesus was not God, um, that he was a human being, mm -hmm. and they believed John the Baptist was a um, vegan as well. That he okay. ate. Yeah. So, do you believe that God is sovereign? What do you mean by something like a king? Yeah, uh, like like a king, but also, um, you know, he he has a plan and and um, you know understands. Uh, I believe in free will, but you're kind of in between. Uh, but my point is, so if um, if God is sovereign, rules over all things, makes yeah. all things happen, why do you think that uh, he has allowed Trinitarian Christianity to be the dominant um, religion of, of Christianity? Because Jesus said that we will be persecuted in Trinitarianism, murdered and tortured people um, over the history of um, mankind. And that it says you will be persecuted for your beliefs, which is what happens. Is it not true that um, the Trinitarians consistently shout heretic? At well, yeah, because why do you think they would be doing that, though? Because they think they're heretics against the Bible. But actually, what they're really heretics against is the um, Antichrist, the 
the Trinitarian viewpoint. You're saying that the Trinitarian view is an antichrist position. Yes. Yes, I do believe that. Interesting. Um, so do you apply context and then how do you do it? I do. Like how, so, do you, how do you apply context? Because when I, when I provided the verses um, about Jesus being called God, mm -hmm. I, I just can't follow your, your, your context here. Yeshua is never called God in relation to Yehovah. Yes, he is being called He's God. He's not going to be saying, called the Father, though. That's the thing, because you have equated the to, Father to okay. being the only God. That's what you're saying. So, so Yahweh is the Father according to your understanding. But um, you're, so you're what are they supposed to? Yeah, I am, but I'm trying to so, understand what you what you believe here. So the okay. the father is called Theos as well. He's given the same names and titles and things like that as Jesus yeah. is. Um, yeah. So how do you draw the distinction? Well, you can clearly see in the Old Testament where they are. You know, if you look at them um, when Jesus is called a God, it's in relation to the good judge of the bad judges, um, and that these judges were called gods and sons of most high, and he is the one that inherits as God, not Jehovah inheriting by the way, but he inherits as this good judge because he gave and rightfully judged and he gave to the poor and he helped and he done all these good things. There's never one place where he says, in fact. Psalms um, 110 verse 1 says, Yehovah said to La Adoni, not uh, Yehovah said to so How does Yehovah. Jesus, that, that's, a, that's a great point. I'm glad you brought that up. So how does Jesus exegete um, that passage? Psalm 110. David um, prophesied of him, the Lord of the, um, David, because Jesus is going to be the king over the millennia, which is the king above all things under G, um, Jesus. So he's going to be above David. So David's Lord is him. Yeah. La Adoni. Just like Abraham is his wife's La Adon uh, Wa Adoni, I think it okay, is. Okay, so what did what did Jesus actually say then? Please please tell me. He said you, you that gave an exegesis, just, but you didn't you didn't quote the Yeah, I can't quote it off by heart, like off the top of my head, but I believe he says that did um David pro um how did David say then that the son of man is his at um master lord um curious mm -hmm. yeah and and i believe that was because of um because david is a prophet right he well yes foresee. of course david is a prophet and, and and he foresees all things but jesus mm -hmm. uh is how can he be the son of david if he was before david yeah it's before in um what's the what's the word i'm looking for like rulership or in authority Where does the bible it's not... say it's authority it's in the word um, for before. It's in the word before? Yes, the the makeup of the word before in the Greek means in authority. So you're just saying that means an authority over, is that correct? Yeah, he's before him. Yeah, okay. That's and, how and we, had, so. we had talked about this um, in uh, in our private chat, but I'm a little bit curious. Already, guys. Already, guys. Already. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for that awesome cross-examination. Um, that, to me, is the best part of the debates, is the question and answer period. That's why I tried to get so much of it together. I think the question and answer period really distinguates uh, each point of views uh, when it comes to the debate. Now, 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 now. We are going to be getting to the closing statements. So each speaker will have five minutes. They will present their closing statements. We will start with Ask Truth Apologetics. Not yet, but he will be the first one to go. Now, after this, everybody, we do the question and answer period. Now. If you'd like to ask your questions, there are multiple ways that you can do this. You can do the super chats and super stickers, and we could try to get you in right away. Uh, you can try to tag my name into the chat. Now, there is 120 people. I may miss it. Uh, you can ask your question in there as well. Or you can click this link that I'm about to put into the chat, and you can join us live, and you can ask your question to one of the speakers. All right, so without further ado, we will start the closing statements 
as soon as Ask Truth Apologetics starts to speak. All right. Well, thank you, uh, Taylor and Chris. I know we're going to say our thank yous again after this, so I'll keep that keep that part brief. Um, I, I believe my opening statement said pretty much everything that we need to, to say here. Um, I talked about how heretics uh, don't understand the essence energy distinction. Um, Taylor decided that philosophy is uh, not good to do while simultaneously using philosophy and um, using wordplay and all kinds of fun stuff. Um, but I think that is where the uh, biggest folly of his uh, heresy comes from is just not understanding the essence energy distinction. Uh, I pray and I hope, uh, Taylor, that you look into that a little bit further because it will make it a little bit more clear because otherwise you become confused. The, 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 the Bible becomes confusing. Jesus is called God, but Jesus is also called man. Um, and in, in his mind, I believe that he has created, like I said, this false dichotomy that uh, leads him to choose one or the other. You either become a modalist and believe that Jesus is is the father and, or God is the father and the son and the Holy spirit. They're all one person just in different modes, or you believe that Jesus was a created, um, person. Uh, so I quoted a whole bunch of passages where Jesus is called my Lord and my God. So what Taylor ends up having to do is play wordplay. Well, the word theos or kurios is actually used for other things sometimes. So, you know, like it doesn't necessarily mean that, you know, he's God. And Taylor went so far as to say as to say that he himself, in a in a in a way, I don't want to straw man him, is actually God. Um, so I find that to be absolutely laughable. Um, and it's kind of kind of sad, right? So we we see that, you know, my Lord, my God, Christ who is God overall. God and Savior, Jesus Christ, uh, the righteousness of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ, right? These are all explicit verses saying that Jesus is God. I walked you guys through um, how Jesus is identified as Yahweh by using Isaiah 40 uh, verse 3 and Malachi 3 uh, verse 1 in relation to uh, the proclamation uh, made from the very first chapter of Mark where he talks about a voice crying in the wilderness, make way for your Lord. And we know through those chapters that the Lord that we're speaking of is actually uh, Yahweh himself. Uh, and, and he didn't really address that point, at least uh, not my logical deductive argument. Um, some other things that I went through uh, was talking about the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. Uh, we clearly see and, and uh, Taylor agreed that the Alpha and the Omega or the, the beginning and the end uh, and the first and the last is God, the father, who he believes is Yahweh. Um, and by the way, he set up some weird precedents that uh, the Tetragrammatron has to be in the New Testament or it doesn't, it's not from God or something like that. Um, but then he went so far as to say that the, well, the father is basically the Tetragrammatron. Um, he wanted me to be able to point out things only from scripture without using logic or reasoning or rationality or philosophy. And yet, he, um, you know, has to engage in those things in order to come to his own conclusion. Uh, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God and the word was God. The word is God. And um, I, I looked it up on Bible Hub right now. It is literally in the imperfect form. The word was is imperfect, meaning that it is is um, present always. Right. So the word was can mean is still at the same time. So Jesus is eternal. Um, Jesus is God. Jesus dwells in uh, the flesh. Uh, so the word of God dwells in the flesh. And yet he says that it's the father because, well, the father uh, is uh, dwelling in Jesus. But then he refuses to understand that. So the so Jesus is also dwelling in the father. And he didn't want to follow that logic through um, to its illogical conclusion. What he wanted to do was basically just move on and say, well, um, it says that we are God's too, because his glory is shared with us. Yeah, not before the world began, not eternally. Um, none of us are eternal. Uh, and I don't think that Taylor would agree with that either. Uh, Jesus is uh, identified as the son of man, the divine son of man prophesied in David. Uh, the Pharisees, the scribes, tear their robes when he says the ego I mean that he is God. He existed before uh, Abraham, 
Uh, they tear his robes. They pick up stones to stone him. They condemn him to death when Jesus says that he is the son of man coming on the, the clouds. Um, and uh, sorry, that's basically my time. So um, anyway, yeah. Jesus yeah. is God. Cool. It's pretty much straightforward. That's it. That's it. Yeah, I was just about to try to unmute myself. I, my finger was slipping on my mute button trying to yeah, get it. I'm, to I'm used there. to moderating my own debate. So I try to keep my <laughs> No problem. Uh, so, Taylor, just before you do start uh, your opening statement, I do have a few people backstage. Uh, so I'm just going to I know that they can hear me. And, and there's a question that they asked me. So uh, John 17. Hey, he, ministries. Um, Taylor still still has his closing statement, though. Yeah, I'm going to let him do that. I'm just telling these guys the oh, order okay. that I'm going to bring them up in after okay. Taylor's closing statement. All right, I was making sure you weren't asking questions. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so John 17, 3 Ministries, your first, uh, Soli, your second, Jeremy, your third, and I believe the Biblicist is in there as well. Uh, but in between those guys, we're going to try to get uh, some... Oh, we do have a Unitarian. Uh, so he's going to be... In between John and Soli, I'm going to try to go back and forth. So, Soli, you will be the second uh, Trinitarian. But anyway, getting into Taylor, you have five minutes, sir. Whenever you start speaking, I will start your time. Um, just start now. Um, looking back at this debate, um, it is impossible. And again, I'm not saying that you have to show in the manuscripts I'm lenient, but I'm saying. By the makeup of what the debate is, um, it's impossible for anyone to show Jesus is your here far here by the makeup of the um, debate. I'm happy with them um, things if it literally correlates with them um, the Bible. I've got no problem with that. But every time we see Jesus is God um, or Lord, it's always one that is under God or Jehovah said to La Adoni. Um, one is Jehovah. Why didn't they say Jehovah said to Jehovah? So I, I understand, like, maybe it's got a bit, it's a semantic, sem the word for um, wordy. I'm, I'm not going to, um, it slipped my mind. Um, but the point is that, yes, people have been called God's sons of the Most High. Moses was called God to Pharaoh and to Aaron and it's actually perfect the way that this is put up with Moses and um, Aaron. We see Moses is like God and Aaron is like the prophet. Jesus is a prophet, one person, and God is one person who speaks and reiterates. Remember that Moses had an issue with them um, speaking. He had a stammer, and that's why he need, it went through um, Aaron. He spoke to Aaron because he felt probably felt comfortable that he could speak. And then Aaron was the one that relayed the messenger message. Nowhere in the entire Bible does it say that Jesus is God. In fact, every time in the Old Testament says, well, let use the Old Testament, it's um, a servant. Isaiah 49, Israel bringing back Israel, my servant. Um, Isaiah 61, which Jesus himself reiterates in Luke 4, saying that um, Jehovah or the, um, the Lord has... Um, his sovereign, the Lord of his sovereign, I'm going to try and paraphrase it. The Lord has anointed me by his sovereign power or something. The Lord has anointed me by his spirit um, to proclaim the good news and stuff. So this prophet, this person who was anointed by Jehovah has been appointed by him to teach these things. That he's been anointed. How can, if, if Jesus is Jehovah God, how can you be anointed when you are the highest level? To anoint is to bring someone up. You start off like David. You start off as a young child, and then he was anointed as king. You're brought up. How do you get from you're fully God and fully man, but you're being anointed by God, and you're chosen by God? It's not really chosen, is it? If you got a football team, you pick some of your friends, but picking out of um, two, apparently two persons, they go, yeah, I want you to do this work. It just doesn't, to me, make um much sense and um the bible nowhere claims um jesus is god man um and if because he's called god but he's also called man in the generic sense well so are the other people you are gods and sons the most high we know for a fact that they're human beings judges 
Um, so you need to, um, you need the Old Testament to show where Jehovah is and the similarities, but even similarity, similar, similarities don't mean that you are definitely the same thing. There are similarities within angels and um, prophets. Um, as we've seen, um, Jehovah said, by my hand, um, I will t smack the water of um, the river Nile and turn it in blood. But it was Aaron's. There are similarities. The King of Kings, the title, Artaxerxes and um, Nebuchadnezzar called King of Kings. Jesus said, if you want to be first, you have to be last, being first and last. Meaning in this day and age, in this world, in hum like the way the world is, we submit and become servants to what did jesus say wash um if i've done this for you do this for each other servanthood to serve people because in this world we will be servants in the next um, world we will be kings under um the messiah we will be out there we are to judge um amongst our brothers not like in, in a bad judgment or like yeah oh, but i'm going to be having a yeah, chop off his hair or anything, but like judge, like brother, you have an issue. We have judges, um, judges to look over again. If they are called gods, the judges, and I am going to be a judge, God willing, if I am um, overcome the things of life, then I will be a god. All right, because that is the uh, five minute closing statement for you, Mr. Taylor. Thank you so much. So, again. In this debate, we were debating, is Jesus Yahweh or Jehovah? Uh, we had Ask Truth Apologetics in the affirmative, and we had Taylor Stewart in the negative. Uh, we have now finished the actual uh, moderated part of the debate. We are now going to jump into the question and answer period. So... The first question, of course, was a super chat or a super sticker from our dear sister, Connie. And now the question would be to you, Mr. Taylor. Now, the way that I'd like to do this is, Taylor, you get up to like a minute and a half, two minutes to answer the question. Ask truth. You get one minute to respond afterwards to that question. Now, uh, Taylor, same thing. If Ask Truth is asked a question, you get one minute after his question to respond to the same question. So we'll do it that way. All right. So Connie's question was, to Taylor, would you agree that Jesus was teaching Isaiah 45 verse 21 in John 17.3? Would you like me to read Isaiah 45, 21 yeah, for you, sir? Do, please. I, I've, I've got a brief understanding of it, but... Okay, uh, so Isaiah, Isaiah 45, 21 reads as following. Tell ye and bring them near. Yea, let them take counsel together who have declared this from ancient time, who hath told it from that time. Have I the Lord, and there is no God else besides me, a just God and a Savior, there is none besides me. And what was the other one? John 17, Sorry. 3. And Connie's no, question so. is, would yeah. you agree that Jesus was teaching Isaiah 45, 21 no. in John 17, 3? No, I don't think so. Okay. Uh, ask truth. You get a stab at that question as well after. Go ahead. Yeah, that's a really good question. And to be quite honest with you, I'm going to have to um, read into it. Um, since he kind of uh, uh, yielded a lot of his time, do you mind reading that passage again for me so I can take it into full full understanding? The, yes, the sir. Isaiah, Isaiah, Isaiah 45, verse 21. One more time for you. Tell ye and bring them near. Yeah, let them take counsel together. Who hath declared this from ancient time? Who hath told it from that time? Have not I the Lord? And there is no God else besides me, a just God and a Savior. There is none beside me. Right. Um, no, I, I can I can see that being linked to it for sure. Um, and I, I wanted to explain the essence-energy distinction, but Taylor just didn't want to 
didn't want to uh, try to listen to it. Um, but when you understand the essence energy distinction, uh, you understand um, that the, the father is a, an energy and the um, son is an energy and not the essence. They're, you, you can't distinguish the energy from the essence, but you can distinguish the energies from the energies. Moving on to the next one, we are going to, what I'm going to do is, uh, oh, where did he go? I had Christian Man in here. Christian Man, if you get back in here, uh, uh, we will be bringing you up to ask a question. We did have the Christian Man, I know he was a Unitarian, yeah. into the back room, so if he does he come has, back He um, has net trouble sometimes, so he might have logged out by an accident. Okay, if he comes back in, uh, he'll be next to come up. Uh, but I did say that uh, John seventeen three John seventeen three ministries is the first one to come up. So John seventeen three, how are you today, sir? Uh, hey, what's up? How's it going? I'm doing wonderful. So, who is your question for, and what is your question, sir? So I have a question for each, if that's fine. So I'll just sure, ask. So, yeah, ask your question to let's say Taylor first. And then you can ask your question to ask truth afterwards. Okay, that sounds good. So, Taylor, um, according to 1 Kings 8.39, it says that only God knows the hearts of all men. And according to Acts 1.24, where the disciples pray to Christ, saying, You, Lord, you know the hearts of all. Which of these two have you chosen? So because well, it, God in the Old Testament says that he alone knows all hearts of men and in acts 124 jesus knows hearts of men D don't you make the uh obvious conclusion that jesus is truly god no god is in jesus so that's how he's able to know the hearts john uh acts 2 acts 2 22 shows that god does everything through him john 14 verse 10 the father's dwelling in him and also john 12 verse 49 the father commanded me what to say and how to say it I already asked truth. You want to stab at that one? Yeah, I mean, that, it, it's just kind of we're, we're just at a standstill at, at this point, right? Because I, I could have answered that question for him, right? His, <laughs> his, the answer he's going to give to every single question like that is it's God acting through Jesus. And then he's going to cite those same same types of passages. He understands it that way. I believe you honestly believe that, Taylor. Um, I understand it uh, in the completely opposite way um, because, again, I understand the philosophy of the um, energy essence distinction. Alrighty. So John 17, three, uh, what would be your question for Mr. Ask Truth Apologetics? Yes. So multiple times in the debate, you referenced the essence energies distinction. Do you follow uh, Eastern Orthodoxy? Um, so I am a non-denominational Christian at this particular time. Um, but in terms of the understanding of the Trinity, uh, from the research I've done, that's the one that uh, makes the most sense to me. Do you believe that the essence um, are really distinct from the energies? No, no. So um, the way that I understand it is the um, the energies are distinct from one another, but they are not distinct from the essence itself. Okay, so one last question. Are they uncreated, the the energies? Yeah, absolutely. They're They're eternal. Okay. All right, yeah, that's it for me. Yeah, thank you. Right, no, and if Taylor wants to answer that. Yeah, so thank Taylor, you, you, Taylor, you got a minute to, if you want to talk on what they were just I'm speaking anything, on, or you can pass. I'm not anything, uh, an orthodox or, or whatever you were saying, an Eastern, so no. <laughs> All righty, thank you very much. Thank you very much, John seventeen three, for coming up and asking your questions. Uh, God bless you, sir. Uh, thank you very much for your support. Uh, so we have... Not Christian man yet, so we're going to bring up Soli Dio Gloria uh, Apologetics. So, Soli, how are you today, sir? Uh, who is your question for, and what would your question be? Yeah, I'm doing good today. Thank you, Chris. Um, my question is for Taylor. I wanted to revisit Philippians 2, and specifically verse 6, where it says that Jesus was in the form of God. Um, the Greek word there for form is morphe, and notice that it's also used in, I think it's verse 7 or verse 8, where it says he took on the form of a servant. So it's the same Greek word, morphe. 
and this mm-hmm. and many commentators i can actually quote to you them like like g walter hansen in the pillar new testament commentary a new testament scholar he says that morphe is a word that means like an outward signification of an inward reality so jesus outwardly he's in the form of god signifying that he really is god and also verses 9 through 11 says that every knee will bow and confess that he is lord and many scholars such as matthew Harmon in his commentary on Philippians, say that this is a re- an allusion uh, of the hymn to Isaiah 45, verse 23, where Jesus, said, where people bow to Yahweh and confess that he is Lord. So I think the main thing is, especially uh, Morphe, why it's used, and the fact that, and I don't think you can get around it easily because you would have to end up resorting to docetism because it says form of a servant, meaning he became a human. So I want to ask Taylor, what does the word form mean in that context? And how is it how is it used and how would you especially interpret that in light of the fact that it's used for both also his taking on the form of a servant and about yeah. Philippians two verses nine through eleven Isaiah forty five. Okay, so in regards to the morphe, um, because it's in Greek, it's not going to say that in word by word in um, the Hebrew. The Hebrew salem um, for image and likeness of God can also mean image, likeness, and form. Um, if you look at the word. And there it's um, God doesn't have a form. No one can see God and live. So clearly it's talking about a representative of what God is. He represents by how he was on earth and being perfect, um, showing it outwardly. God doesn't. Ha- uh, God isn't a man. So it's talking about the form that he was um, creating. Well, yeah, but it says it signifies an inward reality. That's what Yeah, because the- God's in him. Yeah, is that the answer right, so, you give to everything? Yeah. Well, that's what I believe. I'm only going to give you an answer that I honestly believe. Is, I'm not going to just say it just for fun. Well, that's not what Jesus believed. All right. All right, mm-hmm. guys. We, we we had the question there. Uh, thank you very much, Soli. Uh, Ask Truth, do you want to have a little stab at that? you got a minute to comment on that question. Yes, I would like to comment on Soli's voice. You do sound like uh, inspiring philosophy. You had a, You had a cool speaking voice, man. Um, and very, very well articulated. So if you have a YouTube channel, um, let us know. I'd love to, love to follow you, man. Uh, Okay, perfect. Cool. Um, so to, to answer that question and I don't know how much time I have, but I'll try to keep it brief. Um, you know, he existed in the form of what, right? He existed in the form of what he humbled himself and became what he was something else and became a servant. What was he? before well obviously before we read the verse it says he existed in the form of god end of story so he was in the form of god and emptied himself of that nature and became man pretty pretty straightforward pretty simple um i didn't get a chance to expound on that so thank you for the question Sully. Alrighty, thank you very much, Soli, for sorry about that. Thank you very much, Soli, for popping in here and asking your questions. Thank you so much. I think that they were very well thought out and very articulated into the discussion. Uh, we do not have uh, the Christian man back yet, so as soon as he comes back, I'm going to get him up here. I I was told that he had low battery, so sorry about that, Christian man. If I didn't get you up there in time before your battery uh quit um so i'm gonna ask a question to ask truth apologetics um and then taylor can respond on to it afterwards because i don't believe that there's any unitarians in backstage waiting to ask a question so i'm gonna go off of what taylor said in john 17 3 jesus states that the father is the only true god Mm -hmm. How could Jesus be God while making that statement? John 17, 3, Jesus said that the Father is the only true God. How could Jesus be God while making that statement? Because he's he's a separate energy. He's a distinct energy from the energy of the Father. Um, Yeah. Um, Nowhere in the Bible does it say anything about energies. Um, It says the Father is alone, the true God, which means, well, Jesus could be a God, just like judges are. The one that is alone, the true God, God of gods, and Jesus doesn't have that title by way. There's nowhere in the Bible that says Jesus is God of gods, but Jehovah is God of gods. So therefore, it is clear 
the alone true God is the Father, and Jesus is his Messiah. All righty. I just want to throw that question out there because I don't want to pile all these questions on to Taylor. Uh, so we have another person backstage. Well, we have a few. Uh, so I've just now brought up Mr. Jeremy Wong. How you doing, my dear brother in Christ? God bless you, brother. Uh, so go ahead. Uh, say hi to everybody. Uh, let us know who your question's for and then what your question is, sir. Yeah, I have a baby behind. So if you can, God bless. Uh, if you can hear, uh, I'm sorry about that. So my question is, hi, Taylor. Uh, hi, Astruf as well. I haven't met you yet. Um, yes, Taylor, I'm just going to read a few scriptures here. Then I'll ask the question. Is that all right, Chris? Yes, sir. You have up to uh, one minute. Yeah, okay. So in Matthew 21, 5, Matthew 21, 5, it says, Tell the daughter of Zion, behold, your king is coming to you. Right, I'm just going to quote half of it. Matthew was quoting Zechariah, and we know the king coming to you is Jesus. So in Zechariah, um, in the context of Zechariah chapter 2, verses 10 to 11, Zechariah chapter 2, verses 10 to 11, Jehovah says, I am coming and I will dwell in your midst. And not, in, not only that, he also says that you will know that Jehovah has sent me to you. So Jehovah sends Jehovah. And one more thing just to add on to that, um, in Zechariah 12, 10, Zechariah 12, 10, if you get all the scriptures ready, uh, he says, I'm just going to skip here, then they will look to me whom they pierced. Then they will look on me whom they pierced. So is Jesus the Jehovah who was sent by Jehovah who was pierced? Okay. Um, was that Zachariah 2 8? Do you see it? In regards to Jehovah sent another Jehovah. Uh, 2 10 to 11 8 as well but 2 10 to 11 explicitly says okay um <clears throat> i did have this note up but for some reason i haven't got it um i believe it's a trans um, translation error um and it says for those says Yehovah of hosts after glory he has sent me and he's talking about the um, prophets um <clears throat> so the prophet that's saying this he has sent me after the nation in the israel bible it reads like this for thus said Yehovah of hosts he who sent me after glory concerning the nations um that have taken you spoil then the quote starts depend on the translation who touches you Touches the people, pupils of their eye, for I will lift my hand against them, and they shall um, be spoiled for those who um, they have enslaved. End quote. Then it says, Then you shall know that I was sent by the Lord of hosts, not to Jehovah, as also the NLT um, and the NET. There's no um, to Jehovah's there. In regards to the other one that you were stating, um, the they will look to me actually if you look in the israel bible it says that they will lament to me about the one who the ones they have um pierced as one for a son um uh an only son not that they cry to me because they pierced me all righty uh ask truth you got one minute response or up to a minute response uh go ahead if you'd like a stab at that question as well yeah i'll keep it brief everything is apparently either doesn't mean what it says it means or it's a mistranslation so uh jeremy i mean you're you're clearly showing that jesus is god uh, i think that the majority of us completely understand that um but uh my opponent just that's that's the way that he reads it so i don't know if there's much we can say beyond that uh, so really, just thank, going, um, I think that's much. a little bit unfair. It's not even answer our question, but it's a tapping when I've literally shown like three different translations that don't say hey, Taylor, the one you. Taylor, brother. I, that's, just, ta that's not even um, answering the question. You just get a remark. You, you can address the uh, question however you would like to. Uh, thank you very mm -hmm. much, Jeremy, for coming up and asking your question, though. Uh, God bless you, brother. Uh, we do have. Now, I got I to gotta mix up this order. I hate to do this to everybody in the back room. But the Christian man just come back on here. He was on here before. I got to bring him up here. Uh, so Christian man, 
you hey. are here. Uh, so good day to you. Uh, so please let us know who your question is for and then what your question is. Yeah, thanks. Uh, my phone died. I apologize. Um, this is for Ask Truth Apologetics. Um, can you show us a single instance when Jesus leaves Earth? You know, they, they, the apostles ran around teaching who Jesus was, right? They, they, they taught all over in synagogues everywhere. Can you show us a single instance where the apostles teach what you believe right here, that he's God, he's God Almighty? Can you show us in Scripture when Jesus leaves earth, where the apostles teach what you believe. Yeah, the Bible was written by the apostles, bro. Well, can you show us a single instance? I, if, if you watch the debate, my entire opening statement made reference after reference to New Testament documents. Well, I'm not, I'm not talking about reading into text because obviously... I'm not reading into text. It literally says Jesus is God. Well, because, G, yeah, if you see me, you see the Father. If you understood agency, to see Jesus is to see God, Okay. But I want to see where the apostles teach. Hey, because they spoke at Pentecost, if they had believed what you believe, believe me, they would have said, hey, don't you understand? Jesus is God Almighty in the flesh. Can yeah, you show is, me? is Peter an apostle? Peter was an apostle. Can you okay, show hey me? Guys, hey, guys. Yeah, that's what I said hey in guys, second Peter. Hey, yeah. hey guys, I'm, I'm just going to break in here just for a second. Mm -hmm. I'm going to let Christian man frame his uh, question one more time. Mm -hmm. And then we'll have Ask Truth answer it. I just don't want to have it into a debate session back and forth. I don't Maybe mind like a I don't mind like a clarification, mm -hmm. uh, like like the one gentleman did uh, solely, where he had a little bit of clarification with Ask Truth. I okay. don't mind the clarification, but I don't want to have the debates back and forth. Sure, sure. Maybe we can it. arrange for a debate sometime. That's um, very possible. Yeah. So so the apostles taught in Acts two twenty two. So that's a clear statement of who Jesus you, was. But so I'm going to make it clear. Where do because the apostles make it very clear who Jesus is, they preach it. So, can you show us where they preach specifically that Jesus is God Almighty, like you're trying to do consistently throughout this, this uh debate? All right, so you already agreed Peter is an apostle, yeah. Peter said in his letter in the Bible, that is written, unless you want to reject the Bible, that's that's on you. But what I believe is that Second Peter 1 1 is the divinely inspired word of God, and it says, Our God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Yeah, that... Thank Peter's you. Out. Bye. No, I, 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 I can't have you rebutting to it. I'll unmute you, Christian, man, but I can't have you rebutting to it. Uh, Taylor, though, you do have up to a minute to have mm -hmm. your stab at this question as well, sir. Yeah, um, it's quite self-explicit. Um, Two persons. One is God, one is the um, Messiah. It's, it's not talking about um, Jesus is two things it wouldn't have and if it was they would just say our god jesus christ the savior it wouldn't say two parts bringing it up all righty thank you very much uh for your response there taylor i want to thank you very much christian man for coming back uh even though your phone died uh so thank you very much for coming up here and being able to ask your question uh now i'm going to get back into the to the lineup uh, so we do have next up with us our dear friend in Christ, the Biblicist. So the Biblicist, could you please let me know who your question is for, sir, and then what your question is? Hey, Chris. Hi, Taylor. Hi, Oscar okay. Ruth. Nice to meet you. Hey, buddy. Okay, so my question is specifically for Taylor. It's on Acts 20, verse number 28. Uh, would you mind, Chris, if I just read a couple of verses before that so that the context is clear for everyone? Sure. Okay, so I'll read from Acts 20, verse number 25, all the way to 28. I'm using the New King James Version. And indeed, now I know that you all, among whom I have gone, preaching the kingdom of God, will see my face no more. The context here is... Paul is talking to the Ephesians. That's his farewell address to them. Therefore, I, Paul, testify to you this day that I am innocent of the blood of all men. Verse 26. For I have not shunned to declare to you the whole counsel of God. Now, until this point, Paul is talking about God, the kingdom of God. Now, come to verse 28. Therefore, take heed to yourselves and to all the flock among which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers, to shepherd the church of God, 
which he purchased with his own blood. And if you are actually looking into the Greek, the Greek agrees, God over here is Theos, and it's talking about the blood of God, of the God, which he purchased the church with. So, Taylor, what's your take on that? Um, I'm going to just pull up all the different translations because I've seen this before, and I think in the manuscript it doesn't actually have um, God in there, or Theon. Um, oh, it so does, I'm... it does. Okay, I'm not going to take your word for it. Right um, I've it. seen this before. Um, I believe the manuscripts, um, some do have that in, but others don't. So uh, textual man, um, textual differences, um, I can't find the Bible. Oh, sorry, one second. Um, yeah, I have to link right yeah, it doesn't say, um, the NIV doesn't say God bought it. It says he um, who bought it. Um, and if you're going to laugh, I'm not going to um, literally answer this question. So I'll just end there. If you're going to be disrespectful. I already done. asked Truth Apologetics. You get uh, a stab at that question up two minutes, sir. Yeah, purchased with his own blood. And it's making a reference to God. So Jesus is God because he purchased our salvation through his own blood. Amen. Well, thank uh, you, guys. Thank you I, for having me. Sorry, I, I didn't want to make it sound like I'm biased. I just want to say amen because that's what I believe. Sorry about that, Taylor. No, uh, so the Biblicist, thank you very much for coming up and asking your question. Uh, God bless you as well. Um, and I have to drop you back down. Now, we have the Black Doctor in the building. Now, he does have a question for both of the speakers. That's why I wanted to get him into the mix in here. Uh, so the Black Doctor... Uh, if you'd like to go ahead and ask your question to, I'd say, uh, what was the last one too, Taylor? So if you'd like to ask your question to ask Truth Apologetics first, and then we'll do the second question to Taylor after the first one's done. Sure, sure. Uh, greetings to both of you. Uh, the first question is to ask Truth Apologetics. I wanted to get uh, basically your opinion on one particular verse. I want you to go to 1 John chapter 5. First John chapter five, verse 20. And I wanted to get your opinion on this particular text. First John five twenty, And we know that the son of God has come and has given us understanding so that we may know him who is true. And we are in him who is true in his son, Jesus Christ. He is the true God and eternal life. So I, I wanted to get your opinion. Of, of course, the Greek here is a little bit uh, is a little bit tricky. But do you think the the term he is referencing either the father or the son? Um, I've got it pulled up right here in front of me. I mean, on, on first glance, it looks exactly like it's talking about the son, because the last the last phrase here is. Um, we are in him who is true in his son, Jesus Christ. He is the true God and eternal life. So, you know, we all have our own little biases and stuff like that. But at least from my English version, that's exactly what it looks like. I'd have to look into the Greek and be a little more critical. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think that's a really good point. Right. And I, I was I wanted to get your opinion on it because Jesus is also described as true life in uh in first john one two mm -hmm. so that that right that i mean and and the passage is full of things that i don't think would work well with taylor is in this the son of god um has come right he came where did he come from right the bible tells us where he came from he was uh it shared in the eternal glory alongside of the father um etc cetera, etc cetera. so i don't want to go over time but uh there, there's a lot in that verse i think that we can we can derive all right sure. and uh so we'll let uh taylor take a quick stab at that question too on i believe it was first john first chapter john 5, five verse 20. 20 yeah um to be honest i haven't um, read this one too much but from what i can see in the um the verse 19 it's talking about god and then it switches to the son of god and it seems to be going between the two of them i'm not seeing this is outright the um the truth but every time i've seen in the bible as the true god and eternal life it's always the um it's always the father as the true god the true worshipers worship um 
it seems to be basically talking about two people here, but it's mixing between the two. I would have to look into it, um, but that's the, the best thing I can say because I haven't read this much, this one. Excellent. Thank you very much, Taylor. Uh, so, The Black Doctor, uh, your mm -hmm. second question now, sir. Yes, my second question is for Taylor. I would like you to go to a passage that is very familiar to all of us. Uh, Matthew chapter 16, verse 18. Matthew 16, 18. Um, let's see. Uh, and I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So I want to ask you one question. If you believe that your claim is true and that this is the belief of the scriptures and of the apostles, how do you interpret this passage from Jesus who says that the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church? And yet somehow the church faltered in their theology proper for almost 2000 years. I mean, even even Protestants would would say that the church has erred, but the church has never fallen. What is what is your what is your opinion on that passage? Yeah, so they didn't um, fall. The hell hasn't um, taken a, um, won against them or anything like that, and um, <clears throat> the the people were dispersed um, with Jews into uh, Middle Eastern nations and throughout the um, Roman Empire. Many people were killed um, by the um, Trinitarians. That doesn't sound um, pretty godly, does it? When they murder and torture, and so they can't be of God. The true believers went out and were being persecuted. Plus, there's many different um, groups. Well, I'm not personally a big fan of Arianism. It is said that Arian, um, Arian was a Unitarian. So, yeah, I don't think that it has overcame the true believers. For, for a clarifying question, would you place yourself in the League of the Ebionites? Because the way you're seeing, the way you seem to describe who you call the true Christians seem to be in line with the Ebionites, but they denied the virgin birth and believed that you had to follow the law in order to be saved. Is that your, is that your view? No. Okay. I, I was just trying to figure out who, who you were, who you were designating. Yeah. There's many different people. The, the group, the weir. And um, Paul said, I am of the weir. A, sm a, a sect that you, uh, that the Jews call a sect. And we, um, I believe, I'm trying to paraphrase the um, verse, but it says, I, I believe totally of the law and such. Christians um, was used three times. I think the we, which is a sect, was mentioned in the Bible, if I'm not mistaken, six or seven times. There's always been different groups. All righty. Uh, Ask Truth, do you want to take a quick little stab at that one as well? Of course, I'll be brief, right? So Jesus tells Peter that he is the rock that he's going to build his church on. Peter goes on um, in his second letter and says that Jesus Christ is our God and Savior. All righty. So I, I actually enjoy the way that uh, you're presenting yourself here, the Black Doctor. I think that uh, the questions were very well articulated. Uh, hopefully, uh, me and you can contact each other in the future, and hopefully we can get a live stream going. Maybe we have some interesting discussions that we can have together, sir. Of course. I'd enjoy that. Excellent. So thank you very much for coming up here. God bless you, and you have yourself a wonderful evening. You too. All righty. So I'm going to be bringing up two people at the same time. Two <laughs> people at the same time. Uh, so... First off, I believe that uh, she is, I, I believe it's a sister in Christ, uh, Jesus' yeah. little soul. Yeah. Hello. All righty. Nice Hello, how are you? you? Nice yeah. to meet you as well. I'm all right. Yeah, thank you. Thanks very much. No problem. So all, all, we get, all I get you to do is to let us know who you want to ask your question to, and then go ahead and ask your question yeah. to them. I don't know, but I've got autism, Asperger, so I'm, I'm going to ask this question. I'm, well, it's basically, it's about, you know, Luke chapter 2, and uh, when you go to verse 49, I want to ask you, when you know the story where Jesus was a boy and he was 12, and he went into the temple, when he got left behind at the temple, if Jesus got why did he say, and he said unto them, 
how is it that you sought me? Wist ye not that I must be about my father's business? That's one of the verses. So why did he say that it was about his father's business? You understand what I'm saying? Who's who's the question for? I'm sorry. It's for uh, Ask Truth Apologetics. Oh, it's if for me? You, yeah, if you think God is uh, Jesus, why does Jesus say himself that he was in his father's house? In Luke? Right, because he's because he's in his father's Luke. house. The, the, you, you understand that um, there's the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, right? So if there's if Jesus is the Son, then his father is the father like you know what i'm saying like from a from a relational standpoint so yes mm -hmm. he's in his father's house yeah. um am i allowed to reply to that as well oh of yeah. course you can you, you um, get up to a minute to reply taylor 100%. Okay. um yeah um if mary ever believed that jesus was god in flesh or is um his father as well why would she say this if she knew that you would be doing because he's god the things that god does um doing the works of his father it doesn't make sense mary never thought that he was god mm -hmm. and also uh, can go I ahead just say a more verses because i do have a minute don't I? why does it say in john 30 no not john 5 i come of my own soul do nothing as I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just because I seek not my own will, but the will of the Father which has sent me. So we're, we need to apply our understanding. There's so of, many verses um, where it says that Jesus Philippians, is so right, but we have to understand how to, how to properly re read the Bible and exegete it. So when we read Philippians, we understand that Jesus existed in the form of God, but emptied himself, taking on the likeness of a servant on earth. He was a servant. So when, when we read about those types of things, we're like, yeah, that's that makes sense in that from that lens, from the verses that are in the Bible that you're quoting. Yeah. Um, yeah, so if he, he's just talked about Philippians 2 again. We have the same mindset that Jesus had where we are in the form of God or image of God, depending on the Old Testament, we are made in image and likeness of God. We do not consider ourselves to be equal and we have that same um, statement with him. In regards to the actual question, though, um, yeah, Jesus can't do anything without God. I cannot do anything. I don't know the time, nor do the angels, but it is God who reveals things to him for that ministry that he was on earth to relate. Alrighty, thank you very much, uh, Jesus, little soldier, thank you. Uh, for coming up and discussing and asking your yeah. questions. Yeah, thank God you. bless you, and you God have an you. amazing God night. Thank you. God bless. Alrighty, so we have John. Greetings, John. Can we come on up and, and let us know who your questions for, please, and then go ahead and fire your question off. Well, greetings. My uh, my question is for Taylor. And um, Romans 10, 8, verse 8 to 13, is, um, it's Paul, and he says, but what does it say? The, the word is near you in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith, which we are preaching, that if you confess with your mouth, Jesus as Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart, a person believes, resulting in righteousness, and with the mouth, he confesses, resulting in salvation. For the scripture says, whoever believes in him will not be put to shame, for there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. For the same Lord is Lord of all, abounding in riches for all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And Paul quotes Joel 2.32, where it says, in, um, he specifically quotes Joel 2.32, word for word in the Septuagint. And it is as stated, and it will come that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. For on Mount Zion in Jerusalem, there will those who escape, just as the Lord has said, even among the survivors whom the Lord calls. And the word for Lord here is Yahweh. So do you believe that Paul is equating Yahweh to the Lord Jesus Christ? 
Okay, firstly, um, sewing together different verses that aren't even word by word exactly the same. One says, if you call upon Jehovah, um, the name of Jehovah God, you will be saved. This one says, if you say that Jesus is Lord, which I have no problem, he is my king, he's my brother, he's the one that's over us, he's given all, being given of all authority, he is Lord of me. And the God, um, as we see in, we believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. Yes, God raised him, not himself raising him. It was God who raised him from the dead and Jesus is the Lord. I've got no problem with that, but it's not saying Jesus is the same Yehovah and it doesn't say it at all that if you believe Jesus or you believe Jesus is the Lord that you call on that name for salvation, it doesn't say anything like that in that passage. Well, in the Greek Septuagint, these, if I recall properly, it is word for word stated as is quoted in the mm -hmm. text of Romans is it's uh, the same as in Joel word for word. Yeah. And the um, Greek Septuagint is a translation from Hebrew. So yes. it's not going to be, it's, it's not word by word because the Greek Septuagint would say Lord curious and such, but it doesn't say it, Jesus Christ um, that you, um, was it declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and I can't see anywhere that you um, call him, Jesus, that Lord. Alrighty, yes, yeah. Truth, do you want to take a stab at that question? Yeah, so it's very clear that Jesus is is identified as Lord, and um, Taylor also agreed that uh, he is Lord. Um, and so when we read Joel 2.32, and it shall come to pass that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord, that's capital O, capital, or capital L, capital O, capital, so that's the tetragrammatron, or at least Adonai, shall be saved. So he's, he's quoting from the Hebrew, this is the translation I'm getting, um, the, the same thing. So Paul is, is saying that Jesus is the Lord that is spoken about in Joel 2.32. All righty. So I want to thank you very much, John, for coming up and asking your question. Uh, may you. God bless you, man. You too. All righty. So that, to me, will end the debate this evening. I do still have four people backstage, but I'm letting them debate in the chat. Uh, they can do that all day and night <laughs> if they'd like to in there. Uh, it doesn't bother me at all. Uh, so I do want to thank Mr. Taylor Stewart uh, for coming by and participating in the debate. I'd also like to thank Mr. Ask Truth Apologetics uh, for coming by and participating in the debate as well. I think the debate was uh, very informative. Um, I know that I wanted to bite my tongue, and I did bite my tongue a few times in the debate, uh, but I do felt I feel like I kept myself neutral uh, within this debate. Uh, so I do want to thank both gentlemen. Now, just to end off, I'm going to drop you both backstage here. And thank you all very much for tuning in. Remember, if you like the content, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, and turn on the bell for all notifications. So you will know when I come, uh, we can't ask more questions. Um, you know what? Let me bring them both back up just for you, Connie. Your dear sister, Connie, um, I we've been going about two and a half hours, uh, but I will bring them both back up here. We got Ask Truth back up here. We have Taylor back up here. Um, if you have one more question, Connie, I will ask them the question for you. <laughs> Connie's making, making things happen, aren't you, Connie? Yeah, I, I've got no problem for sister Connie. She definitely supports me uh, quite a bit. And if she just wants to ask one more question. She's a strong no woman, dude. I wouldn't say no either. Definitely. Is she coming up? Oh, I think she is. Yeah, can you hear? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, this this is for Taylor. How are you doing, Taylor? How are you doing? I'm well, thanks. Good, sir. Okay, now just let's just assume that you do everything that Jesus says here in John 14, 23. Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. Why is Jesus abiding with you if he's not God, Taylor? Because he's allowed to. Why is the Holy Spirit not? 
why is it just the Father and the Son? We are to be one together, them in us and us in them. So the Bible says they're allowed to. I've got no problem with that. Hopefully I've answered it. I think I did, but... Yeah, um, Connie, I think you just you, you, you asked a good good question. Um, let me mm-hmm. read it, Protestant believer. Thank you for posting it. So Jesus had answered uh, and said unto him, If a man uh, love me, he will keep my words, and my Father uh, will love him, and we will come unto him and make – All right, sorry, my monitor's about to turn off uh, – make our abode with him. Um um, and we will continue to make our abode with him. Yeah. So keep the word of my father with him, and we, right, will come into him. Yeah. So we. So uh, clearly, Jesus is equating himself um, with with the Father in essence. Um, and when you read throughout the Bible, he also uh, includes um, the the Holy Spirit, right, who who will uh, dwell in us as well. So that's three different persons that are identified as dwelling within us who are also identified as one God or one essence. Excellent. Thank you very much. My dear sister in Christ, Miss <laughs> Connie, always a wonderful uh, having you coming up and asking your question. Uh, God bless you, dear sister. Uh, thank you very much God for coming you. up. Thank you. Alrighty, so I am going to drop Ask Truth and Taylor back down again because now I don't have to. Now I'm okay. The debate's over. Er, er, debate's over. I don't have to be neutral anymore. And I think that this is a very important uh, verse. So I just want to go over it one more time. Jesus answered them and said, If a man love me, he will keep my words. What words? the words that Jesus spoke, and my Father will love him as well, right? And we will come unto him, and we will make our abode with him. So we have the Father and the Son coming and making our abode with us. We have already have the Holy Spirit, because John 14, John 15, and John 16, Jesus tells us he's going to send another comforter who, who will be with us. So we already have the Holy Spirit in us that Jesus tells us that he's going to send. Now we have the Father and the Son both abiding with us as well. Um, A very beautiful passage from our sister uh, in Christ uh, to bring up. Uh, So thank you very much, Ani. That was a very good last question to bring up. Uh, So again, I just want to end this off with I want to thank uh, my Lord and Savior, my God and Lord and Savior. Uh, for providing me with the ability to be able to be online and strengthen Christians in the defense of the gospel, uh, something that I love to do, uh, something that I have much passion for. Uh, so I do thank God that he allows me to uh, keep doing this and uh, providing for me in the in the meantime. Next off, I want to thank my wife and my children. Uh, it is a lot. I take a lot of time out of the day. I do work 48 hours a week. Uh, and try to do two to three live streams in a week as well. So there is a lot of time and and support that my wife and my kids have to provide me. And thank God that God provided me with a godly wife and, and some pretty good children. I'm not going to say that they're, 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 they're great children by any means, but I have definitely have some very good children. Uh, God, thank you for that. And last but not least, I want to thank everybody out there, all of you subscribers, all of you viewers. Again. If you weren't here, I would be simply speaking to myself. Uh, so thank you very much for showing up and being with me each time in it, uh, day in and day out. Um, and putting up with me all the time as well. Thank you very much for all that. Um, and if you'd like to go ahead and support the channel, to go ahead and the only support, support that I would ask for is um, just to view the videos, hit that like button, um, hit the subscribe button and turn on all notifications. But if the Lord does place it upon your heart to help this ministry, uh, we do also have links. We have the super chats and we have these super stickers. Uh, We have PayPal and also you can join to be a member to help the ministry as well. So in saying that though, folks, we do have another live stream coming up 
very, very, very shortly. In 30 minutes and 30 some seconds, we do have our dear brother in Christ, the Shimonian himself, Mr. Sam Shimon. He will be going live in 30 minutes. And Taylor Stewart, if you're listening out there still, I'm not sure if you are, you are more than welcome to join Mr. Sam Shimon while he's live on that channel. And Christian Man, you are also invited to join Sam live on his channel this evening to talk about the triune God of Scripture. And also, I do believe I saw Jesus Little Soldier get that invitation to the live stream as well. Uh, so please, Unitarians, um, don't be too don't be too uh, shy. You can go see Sam. He doesn't bite too hard. Again, he doesn't bite too hard. <laughs> but uh, you definitely get a lot of truth uh, and, and Bible knowledge if you go to Sam Shimon. So everybody that's here, we all need to go visit Sam Shimon. He did put that link into the chat. So we all need to go over there and watch that live stream later on this evening. Uh, and again, I want to thank everybody for being here. And even Shimonian. Uh, thank you very much for supporting uh, and showing love to the channel, dear brother. Uh, much love back to you. Um, and may God keep blessing you, brother. Uh, all these articles that you're putting out, all these videos that you're putting out are definitely helping strengthen uh, Christians in the defense of the gospel, especially me. And I think that you've known that. I've told you many times over. Uh, but before all of my debates, I definitely go through answering Islam, Sam Shimon's articles. Um, and try to find the best argument possible. Uh, because when you look up Sam's articles, you actually have battle-tested arguments. These arguments have already been in debates. They've already been unrefutable. And they've been written down so that we've been able to use them in the upcoming uh, debates that we're going to be using. Um, and as Sam has always said, please go ahead, use his material Use it for the glory of God, but please do not charge anything for it. Uh, we are not to charge anything for this knowledge. This is God's knowledge. We are just to pass it on. If God blesses us with the ability to receive a love offering, then God will do this. Um, other than that, so thank you very much uh, for being here. God bless everybody. In less than 28 minutes, we'll all be on Sam's channel for... <laughs> the next live stream. God bless everybody, and we'll talk to you.